Chapter 1181 The Image of the Nine Stars Reappears Translator Born to be although Long Chen had never gone to the Wine God Palace, just by seeing this construction, he could tell he had arrived. It was less than 30 miles in diameter. Looking from the air, it looked like a huge wine pot lying on its side. It was definitely a unique structure. The entrance was the wine pot's spout. Even from the entrance, he could smell a dense wine fragrance that could intoxicate him. Hey, Grand Uncle, once we go inside, you have to act with propriety. If you get kicked out, it would be too embarrassing. At that time, don't blame me for not being loyal and acting like I don't know you, said Xia Yaoluo solemnly. Uncle Long had now become Grand Uncle. It felt like he had aged another couple of decades. Well, it wasn't as if Long Chen wanted her loyalty. He shook his head. That's fine. In any case, someone as old as me isn't afraid of losing face. But little girl, if you're worried about being implicated, you can go first. Since he was being called Grand Uncle, Long Chen took advantage of his newfound seniority to call her little girl. Do you think I'm such a disloyal person? I'm just telling you to reserve yourself a bit. This is the Wine God Palace, and if you cause trouble, you'll be kicked out. Not only will you lose face, but my imperial father will also scold you, warned the little girl. Big brother won't blame me. After all, we're brothers. Long Chen thickened his skin and directly called the leader of the Grand Xia his big brother. Now he wasn't just taking advantage of Xia Yaoluo, he was even superior to Xia Yanchang. You, if my father learns of this, he'll definitely cut off your head. The little girl clenched her teeth. She had never seen someone so shameless. That's fine. To die to my brother's blade, it wouldn't be a vain death. I'm going in, so you should leave. Wine isn't something a little girl should drink, said Long Chen. You, you're the child. I've already become an adult. What's the big deal? The worst case is I get kicked out again, snorted the little girl. Long Chen looked at Xia Yaoluo oddly. Why does it feel like you've already been kicked out before? Only then did Xia Yaoluo realize she had exposed herself with her own mouth. She turned red and bashfully said, At that time, I was still young and didn't understand. I won't be kicked out now. Then will I end up being implicated by you? It'd be embarrassing to be kicked out as soon as I enter. Long Chen hesitated. Now he really didn't want Xia Yaoluo to follow him. He didn't want to get kicked out with her. I was still young last year. They were the petty ones. Even if I was in the wrong, I was just a little child. HMPH. I can't believe they quibbled with a child like that, said Xia Yaoluo. Last year? If she really had been a little child at that time, then she was truly a genius. But now that they had come here, Long Chen could only thicken his skin and enter. He hoped this little girl wouldn't cause any trouble. The entrance didn't have any guards, nor was there anyone to receive them. Once they were inside, they found themselves in front of a tranquil courtyard. There was a stone stell in front of them with an image on it. The image contained a man in shoddy clothes. He was half lying against a peach tree, a wine pot in his hand. It was clear he was drunk. He was looking into the distance with a lost expression, seeming half intoxicated half sober. The scene was very lifelike. His clothes were worn out, and he had dust all over him. He was extremely sloppy, with a few flower petals lying on his head, but he gave off an air of freedom and relaxation. This was a realm, one where the body rested within the world of mortal dust, while the heart was flying within the clouds. As soon as Long Chen looked at it, he was drawn in by that realm. In that instant, he felt all his mundane worries fall away from him. His heart became empty. The lines forming the man were very simple, almost careless, but just these few lines bestowed that man a moving divine charm. Long Chen followed where that man was looking to see nine brilliant stars shining in the air. They were like a ring of blazing suns in the upper left corner of the image. Long Chen, go light the incense. Suddenly, Long Chen felt Xia Yaoluo push him. Only then did Long Chen wake from his stupor and realize that a youth in hemp clothes with his hair worn in a bun was offering him incense. Ah, sorry. Long Chen hastily received the incense sticks. The youth shook his head. Esteemed guest, there's no need for you to apologize. This image is the wine god. For you to be drawn in by the wine god's divine charm means you have destiny between you two. Although this youth was just a teen, his voice was naturally tranquil. He was neither servile nor overbearing, neither arrogant nor impatient. Long Chen received the incense sticks. Lighting them, he placed them into the censer. He had only just put them in when his three incense sticks instantly turned to ash. What? The youth was shocked. He had no idea what had happened. These incense sticks were made of special material, 
No matter what kind of outer force tried to disturb them, they would always burn for exactly 15 minutes. But now, they had instantly been incinerated. He had never seen such a phenomenon. Long Chen and Xia Yaoluo were also surprised. Um, miss, please also place the incense. The youth hesitated but still handed incense sticks to Xia Yaoluo. Xia Yaoluo ignited her incense sticks and placed them inside. Everything was normal this time. The three incense sticks were slowly burning. Please enter. The youth waved his hand to them in a welcoming gesture. Long Chen, what happened just now? Asked Xia Yaoluo stealthily as they entered the courtyard. Harud, call me uncle. Long Chen intentionally put on a chiding expression. HMPH, who would call you that? Xia Yaoluo sniffed and turned her head. Just like that, the title of uncle was tossed aside. Long Chen laughed inside. This little girl wasn't even close to his match. But he also couldn't offend this little girl. He said, in truth, I also don't know. I just felt a mystical energy destroy those incense sticks. It was just like, it was like a strange kind of energy had refused to allow Long Chen to offer incense. But Long Chen also wasn't clear on that. He just felt it was extremely strange. Just like what? Seeing Long Chen suddenly stop talking, Xia Yaoluo hastily questioned him. Just like, Sai, I'm not very erudite, and I don't know how to describe it. Long Chen shook his head dimly. That's fine. Just think about it. I'm not in a rush. Xia Yaoluo was very curious and had to know. It's just like someone is going to the bathroom and suddenly realized they were out of toilet paper. At this time, someone gave them a wooden stick, but after a moment's hesitation, they refused the stick. It's probably because they're waiting for someone to give them paper instead, said Long Chen. What on earth are you talking about? How can you compare placing incense on a sensor to such a thing? One's fragrant and one's smelly. They're completely different. Furthermore, so what if there's no paper or stick? Asked Xia Yaoluo. It appeared as incredibly crappy joke was truly crappy. He supposed the royal people in the palace had never used a stick to wipe their butts. But after Long Chen said this, Xia Yaoluo stopped asking. Once they were inside, Long Chen found that this building which looked like a wine pot actually had its own space inside. There were mountains, rivers, and lakes. The scenery stretched as far as the eye could see. The wine god palace is in itself a treasure. It contains its own spatial formation inside. There's plenty of farmland, and all the ingredients they put into their wine are grown themselves, said Xia Yaoluo. She was now much more well-behaved upon entering the wine god palace. There was a small mountain not far from them. A stone path meandered its way toward it. Plenty of old trees grew within the mountain, and everything was extremely secluded and beautiful. A few pavilions were hidden within the trees, looking like peaceful places to live. At the foot of the mountain, they suddenly sensed a faint drizzle watering the flourishing grass. This place was full of life. What an amazing place. As the drizzle washed over him, Long Chen couldn't help but exclaim in praise. This seemed to be the kind of place where an expert would choose to live in seclusion. Here, all his troubles seemed to vanish. Does no one normally come to the wine god palace? Why aren't there any outsiders here? Asked Long Chen. Do you think just anyone can come here? People who want to come inside have to make an appointment. Only the members of my grand Xia's imperial family have the privilege of bringing people in to pay respects at any time, said Xia Yaoluo disdainfully. It seemed she still remembered her enmity with him. As long as he gave her an opportunity, she would immediately get some revenge. Long Chen stepped onto the stone stairs and suddenly felt a strange energy wash over him. He felt some kind of energy stripping him of all his power. This is the wine god palace's formation. It strips us of our cultivation base making us just mortals. It's truly strange, explained Xia Yaoluo. A mortal? Are you saying you're an immortal? Laughed Long Chen. As this mystical energy stripped him of his power, Long Chen felt the primal chaos bead begin to slowly circulate. Long Chen hastily stopped it. He knew the primal chaos bead was beginning to automatically resist this energy. He didn't want to cause a fuss and allow the energy to wash through him. It sealed his meridians, immortal platforms, and even his spiritual strength. At this time, Long Chen only had the power of his physical body. His divine sense vanished. At first, he wasn't used to it. But as time passed, he felt his heart became more relaxed than ever. There was a kind of pleasure in returning to being a normal mortal. It couldn't be expressed with words. After losing all that you depended upon, you would suddenly feel more at peace. As if all your burdens had been put down. It was another kind of experience. But Long Chen saw Xia Yaoluo frown. 
She clearly didn't like this feeling. Let's go. Long Chen continued onward. This was his first time feeling so solid. It was a feeling of having his feet firmly planted on the ground. Even just walking across the ground was an extremely moving experience now. However, these stone stairs had grass and moss growing over them, making them slippery. It was all too easy to lose your balance here. Aya, Zaya Yaluo had only taken a few careful steps when she slipped. Despite doing her best to avoid the mossy parts, she still slipped. If she fell, she would become covered in mud. Long Chen hastily grabbed her, allowing her to steady herself. This damn Zaya Yaluo was just about to curse this damn path for being so hard to walk on when she clamped her hands over her mouth. She looked around, and seeing there was no one else around, she relaxed. Chapter 1182 Judging Translator Born to be where you kicked out last time because of this. Long Chen looked at Zaya Yaluo curiously. What do you think? All I did was grumble and complain a bit, and they kicked me out. Don't you think they're petty? Zaya Yaluo whispered like she was in the midst of a heist. You just don't understand them. Just entering this place is a rare opportunity that you couldn't buy no matter how much gold you have. The Wine God Palace kindly let you enter, and then you spit on their kindness. Naturally they get angry. Think about this. What if you were to give a pastry to a starving person, but that person had never seen a pastry before and thought you were offering them a pile of dung, so they got angry at you for insulting them. Would you get mad then? Asked Long Chen. It's a nice argument, but did you have to make it sound so disgusting? Could you not make a more elegant comparison? Zaya Yaluo glared at Long Chen. I'm not an elegant person by nature, so why bother acting? Long Chen shook his head. But I'm a woman. Can't you reserve yourself a bit? Raged Zaya Yaluo. You're a woman? I think of you as just a little girl. Come, this way. Long Chen continued onward. Hey, wait a moment. You have to hold my hand, or I'll fall, cried Zaya Yaluo upon seeing Long Chen go on without her. It's not convenient for me, a man, to hold the hand of a woman. You should just walk slowly on your own, declined Long Chen. You're a man? HMPH. I just treat you as a granduncle. What's wrong with you holding my hand? Zaya Yaluo used Long Chen's own words to strike back at him. Long Chen laughed. This little girl actually did have some skill. He took her hand. He clearly felt her quiver and blush a bit. Long Chen was the first outsider Zaya Yaluo had touched like this. But to express her courage, she put on an indifferent expression. Long Chen pulled her forward a few steps. In truth, this path is a kind of cultivation. Cultivation. Zaya Yaluo was flabbergasted. Yes, a kind of heart cultivation. Once you lose everything you depend on, you can return to your original state. This is a way to temper your heart. You're still too young and you've experienced too little. In your eyes, mud is dirty, so you don't want to touch it. But you've forgotten. Everything on the ground was born from the mud and earth. Everything you eat, everything you use, it has come from the mud. Do you think the spirit fruits you eat are clean? Your shoes touch the ground every day, and yet you think it's filthy? Everything high class is built on top of the low class as a foundation. When a person has nothing to eat, when a person has no guarantee of being able to live to tomorrow, the only thing they'll think about is survival. Only when people have guaranteed their own survival do they seek higher things. But many people end up chasing those things until they've forgotten the essence of life. The formation here allows us to return to our original state, allowing us to see the essence of life clearly. Cultivation isn't just dependent on cultivation base or talent. The majority of it is dependent on comprehension. If you can't even understand your life, you will only be a frog at the bottom of a well isolated from the truth of the greater world. In the end, you'll never be able to reach the peak of the martial path, said Long Chen as he pulled her forward. After all, she was Xia Yanchong's little sister, and so he gave her a kind reminder. Clapping rang out. Xia Yaoluo was still lost in the clouds, and the two of them had arrived in front of a little pavilion without even noticing it. They saw a white-robed man who appeared to be in his thirties standing in front of the pavilion, clapping lightly. Esteemed guest's comprehension is admirable. I hope you can do me the honor of tasting this lowly one's wine. You, you're inviting us to taste your wine? Is this real? Aya, Zaya Yaluo ended up too excited and almost slipped again. If it weren't for Long Chen studying her, she would have embarrassed herself. The man smiled slightly and elegantly said, As long as you do not say any words of blasphemy toward the wine god, I would not dare to expel an honored guest again. Hearing this, Long Chen realized that Xia Yaoluo had been kicked out last time by this man. By following the small path, 
the first place which visitors arrived at would be this pavilion. In other words, last time Zia Yaluo hadn't even drunk a single drop of wine before being kicked out, and once she had returned to the palace, she had been scolded. That had been extremely miserable for her, which was why she was so excited now. I definitely won't. Definitely not. Okay, I just won't say anything at all, declared Zia Yaluo. Please, come inside. The man smiled and gestured for them to come in. Long Chen cupped his fists toward him and they entered the small pavilion. There was merely a 10 meter space and a table inside. A wine jug and a few cups were arranged simply on the table. Have a seat. This is the wine I made. Please, have a taste. The middle aged man took out a spotlessly white handkerchief and cleaned his hands carefully. He then took out two refined jade bowls. These bowls were amber colored and extremely small, only a bit wider than an inch. He picked up a small wine jug only the size of a fist and lightly poured a very limited amount of liquid into the bowls. The bowls transformed, becoming a darker red color. A powerful fragrance filled the air, penetrating deep into their hearts. Zaya Yaluo swallowed her saliva Novaloon.com The wine god palace's disciples all had their own specific wines, and they were not distributed outside. Only people invited into the wine god palace could taste them. Even the fine wine the Grand Zaya Imperial family drank although it also came from the wine god palace, was different from these special wines that the individual disciples developed themselves. They were on completely different levels. Please, the man gestured, and Zaya Yaluo, who had long since startled drooling, carefully raised the bowl with two hands and placed it on her lips. She took a slight sniff and sipped it lightly. She then swallowed it in three different proportions, completely finishing it. Long Chen smiled and raised his bowl, draining it in one gulp. He felt like a clear spring had poured into his stomach and instantly spread throughout his four limbs. It was cleansing his body, making him feel indescribably comfortable. At the same time, some ineffable energy washed his heart and soul. What amazing wine! I've never tasted such good wine before, exclaimed Zaya Yaluo with delight. Many thanks for your praise. May I ask what about it is good? Asked the man. I, Zaya Yaluo was immediately at a loss of words. She had very foundational wine tasting skills, but that was just part of the essential etiquette imparted on the members of the imperial family. When it came to actually judging the wine, she had no ability. She cursed herself for having a big mouth. Now she had no idea what to say, but she was very smart and she suddenly smiled. My big brother is a grand master at appraising wine. He'll give you a satisfactory reply, so I won't embarrass myself. I'm not grand uncle anymore? Why did it seem like the imperial family's seniority changed with her mood? Big brother Long Chen, aren't you going to say anything? Zaya Yaluo nudged Long Chen upon seeing him just stare at her lifelessly. All right, count yourself as smart, so you know how to con others. Not bad, your advancement is very fast. As long as you follow me, your skills will definitely grow with each passing minute. I'll have to get some tuition fees from Zaya Yanchang. Seeing the man looking at him, Long Chen said. This wine's good points are how you put your whole mind and soul into making it. You used your spiritual strength to extract the impurities, making this wine's purity reach the pinnacle. Furthermore, during the fermenting process, you blended your comprehension of the heavenly deos into the wine with a special flame energy. It can be said that this wine has reached an almost flawless level. The wine's energy spreads throughout the body evenly, then in the same way as how the water soars into the air when the tide crashes against the cliffside. The comprehension energy within the wine pours into the drinker's heart, giving them boundless benefits. So this truly is good wine. As Long Chen spoke frankly with assurance, Zaya Yaluo was filled with shock. She had already been prepared to be kicked out with Long Chen. Who would have thought that Long Chen would really be able to make such a stunning evaluation? Each of his words was like a gem that could be pondered at length. When she thought about it carefully, the evaluation was really on point. That made her admiration of him rise. She had always thought he was nothing more than a coarse-mouthed fellow. Now, she was completely shocked by his comments. Most importantly, she saw that the man was also filled with shock. Sir truly is amazing. You were able to state all my wine's characteristics. He praised. No, it's just that I'm an alchemist. So I know a bit about appraising things. It's not much. Long Chen smiled. You are proficient in the pill deo. Asked the middle-aged man. A bit. Long Chen smiled slightly. Then could you give me some pointers about my wine? He asked sincerely. Zaya Yaluo looked wide-eyed at Long Chen. Now she was completely unable to understand him. I wouldn't dare to say that I could give you pointers. However, 
This wine has one fatal weakness. It's fated to never reach the level of a true Dao, said Long Chen. Long Chen's words immediately caused Xia Yaoluo's expression to change. She looked toward the middle-aged man and as expected, his expression had sunk. May I ask how so? What fatal weakness does my wine possess? The middle-aged man took a deep breath and forced himself to be calm. But Xia Yaoluo could clearly hear a trace of anger in his voice. The wine god palace's disciples viewed their own wine as their most sacred possession. They definitely wouldn't allow anyone to blaspheme it. But Long Chen said it possessed a fatal weakness. And even worse, he said it would never reach the level that all these disciples strived to reach. That wasn't just an insult to the wine. It was an insult to the winemaker. Xia Yaoluo nervously stood up. But Long Chen continued to sit there, a smile on his face. Chapter 1183 Akon Translator Born to be just what I would expect from a disciple of the Wine God Palace. People with faith are truly different. No matter how angry you get, you are able to use the power of your faith to control your emotions. Long Chen gave him a thumbs up. The middle age didn't say anything. In truth, he was extremely angry, because Long Chen's last words had rattled his Dao heart. In truth. I said this in order to test you. If you had really been unable to endure my words and directly kicked me out, then there would be no need for me to further explore the wine god palace, said Long Chen calmly. From the moment I entered this room, I could tell that you are extremely meticulous. You refuse for there to be any blemishes or flaws. From the way you cleaned your hands, to when you took out the bowls, to when you poured the wine, even the positions of the wine jug to the wine bowls must be perfect. When you finished pouring the wine, you placed the wine jug where it was exactly. So when I raised my bowl with one hand and gulped it down in one mouthful, your emotions clearly began to change. As Long Chen spoke, the middle-aged man's furious expression gradually faded to be replaced with dense shock. Even Xia Yaoluo looked at Long Chen with shock. He had actually seen such details? She hadn't noticed a single one of them. Long Chen continued, Because my conduct is not in accordance with proper conduct in your eyes, you became uncomfortable. You are someone who pursues perfection. It is precisely because you pursue perfection that your path forward has been blocked. Your wine is a masterpiece that has gone through thousands of refinements. It is almost flawless. But have you not found that you are currently stuck in a bottleneck that you cannot break out of no matter what? Yes, yes. I've been stuck at this bottleneck for seven years already. And I've been unable to advance an inch. I even once went out and wandered the land in search of an opportunity to break through but I'm still stuck. Please enlighten me. The remaining anger on his face had long since vanished. At this time, the middle-aged man was staring at Long Chen with a pleading light in his eyes. Seeing this dumbfounded Xia Yaoluo, she was almost unable to believe it. The always incredibly prideful disciple of the Wine God Palace could actually make such an expression? Her eyes had truly been opened to the world. In truth, the Wine God bestowed you an opportunity to break through one year ago. Regretfully, you were unable to seize it, said Long Chen with a smile that was not quite a smile. One year ago? Are you talking about her? The middle-aged man was filled with shock. Xia Yaoluo was still dumbfounded. How had she become his opportunity to break through? Correct. One year ago, she came and said some things she shouldn't have said. You kicked her out. But in truth, she was your opportunity to advance, said Long Chen. Please point me onto the right path. The middle-aged man bowed deeply toward Long Chen. You're too courteous. I came to the Wine God Palace in order to sincerely pursue my learning. I was lacking manners, but you still didn't kick me out. Your magnanimity is admirable. Since that's the case, I will be direct. When the 17th princess came last time, she was your chance to advance because she is simply naive and immature. She had no schemes in her heart, and no matter her actions, she had no intention of blaspheming the Wine God Palace. At that time, if you would have been able to forgive her and not quibble with her, you would have broken through your bottleneck, said Long Chen. I'm still confused. Can sir please explain it clearer? Asked the middle-aged man. Seeing as how there were no taxes for bragging, Long Chen solemnly said, Your wine Dao is also one of the heavenly Daos, and you strive to reach the highest realm in this Dao. But could it be you do not know that there is no such thing as perfection in this world? The sun and moon wax and wane. The flow of destiny ebbs and rises. Right and wrong, yin and yang, positive and negative, even the deos of the heavens are filled with irreparable shortcomings. When something reaches a peak in one aspect, it can only go in the opposite direction. A tree sometimes thrives, and a tree sometimes withers. You always pursue perfection, which is innately a dead end. 
the heavenly deos are in a perfect cycle that continuously rotates. Because there are flaws, there can be yin and yang complementing each other in constant movement. Ask yourself, if the sun and moon only waxed and never waned, if creatures were only born and never died, just how would this world work? The middle-aged man looked at Long Chen with shock, but he was still at a loss. You still don't understand? Long Chen continued. And so, there is no absolute right in this world, nor is there any perfection. Only when there are flaws can things change and have room for growth. Absolute perfection cannot exist, because absolute perfection only signifies destruction. The middle-aged man's lost expression gradually faded. His body suddenly became covered by a halo of light, and a strange fluctuation spread which caused Long Chen and Xia Yaoluo to jump. It seemed this person was undergoing a moment of sudden enlightenment, instantly breaking through to some kind of realm. Disciple Luo Yan Kaotao's in thanks for your pointers. I will never forget your favor. The middle-aged man suddenly knelt on the ground toward Long Chen, and then he bowed to Xia Yaoluo, saying, 17th Princess. I formally apologize for my rudeness to you back then. I, I, Xia Yaoluo was so frightened she was hiding behind Long Chen, not even daring to speak. In her memory, this person would always be that fierce person who had scolded and kicked her out of the wine god palace, but now he was bowing toward her, and she had no idea what to say. Since you've become enlightened, you'll definitely advance by leaps and bounds in the future. We won't disturb you for now. Long Chen stood, for your great favor. I should provide you my greatest hospitality, but I really must solidify my comprehension, so I truly cannot accompany you. This is the stock of what I've refined during these years. Please, you absolutely must accept it, or I wouldn't be able to rest my heart. The middle-aged man offered a spatial ring to Long Chen with both hands. I can't possibly accept. However, since you've been enlightened, the wine you make in the future will be the truly fine wine. I'll help you get rid of this stuff. Long Chen very shamelessly received the spatial ring. Stealthily taking a peek inside the spatial ring, he saw over a thousand jugs of wine as big as a person, and there were also all kinds of different sized jugs that were too numerous to be counted. But Long Chen's shamelessness had been tempered through a great deal of experience, and he didn't betray a look of shock. Many thanks. Long Chen took his spatial ring, but it was the middle-aged man who said his thanks to Long Chen. He sent the two of them out of his pavilion and then went directly into seclusion. The dumbfounded Xia Yaoluo didn't even know how she left the pavilion. She only reacted once they were a ways away. Long Chen, you're amazing. Can you teach me all that knowledge in the future? Asked Xia Yaoluo. How impudent. Call me granduncle, said Long Chen stiffly. You, you evil person, don't even think about it. Raged Xia Yaoluo. He, if you don't call me granduncle, I won't give you a gift. Long Chen raised his eyebrows a few times, waving the spatial ring in his hand. That was the gift from the middle-aged man. HMPH. I won't surrender. Xia Yaoluo was clearly moved by the spatial ring. But after a long moment of hesitation, she refused to submit. Haha, <laughs> I'm just joking. Looking at her aggrieved expression, Long Chen felt bad teasing her. See, this spatial ring has a total of ten large jugs and dozens of small jugs. Don't blame your uncle for bullying you. Since we're working together, we'll split it equally. Here's one jug for you, one for me, one for me, one for you. Long Chen found a secluded place and began dividing the wine. Now Long Chen didn't look like someone capable of preaching about the Dao. He was clearly a little swindler proudly counting his spoils. Heavens, there's this much. Seeing these huge jugs, Xia Yaoluo clamped her hands over her mouth. This was actually just a small fraction of Long Chen's spoils. It wasn't even 1% of his total gains. Long Chen gave half to Xia Yaoluo and solemnly said, Put them away. You deserve them. Stealing is also a Dao, and conning is also a strategy. Your uncle Long won't mistreat you, chortled Long Chen. Now it was Xia Yaoluo's turn to feel bad. This wine was far too precious. This was that wine god palace disciple's personal wine. Even in the Grand Xia's imperial family, there wasn't a single drop available. Thank you. Xia Yaoluo looked at Long Chen, slightly red in the face but absolutely delighted. If she used this wine when treating others, her prestige would definitely soar. Long Chen, you really are amazing. You know so much about wine. And you're also an alchemist? How do you know so much at such a young age? Xia Yaoluo looked at Long Chen admirably. I'm not young. I'm an uncle figure. Now that I look back at the past, it seems so long ago. Long Chen sighed emotionally. TCH. Stop making the same joke. I was wrong. All right? 
Long Chen, teach me your abilities. When you were talking to that person, you really were very godlike, very handsome, said Xia Yaoluo excitedly. There wasn't any real ability. It's all just a con. I was only blindly guessing and got it right. Let's not waste time. We'll continue and see if there are any good places to get some more good wine, said Long Chen. Xia Yaoluo looked at Long Chen oddly. He looked like a completely different person than the refined Long Chen who had so perfectly described the wine's pros and cons. Now he looked like a swindler in the streets. Foolish girl. What are you just standing there for? Hurry up. Time is wine. Long Chen had taken a few steps and saw that Xia Yaoluo was still just dumbly staring at him. He grabbed her and continued onward. Chapter 1184 Singing a Song Translator Born to be green mountains spread far into the distance. The secluded path twisted through the land, and the greenery was thriving with life as it was nourished by a fine drizzle. There was no killing, no fighting, no sinister schemes. Walking along the small stone steps, Long Chen felt his heart relaxing. He quietly enjoyed this feeling, but Xia Yaoluo was completely unable to sense this feeling. The environment she had grown up in was already peaceful without any danger. Xia Yaoluo had yet to recover from her shock, but looking at how sloppy Long Chen looked as he chewed a stalk of grass and hummed a vulgar tune, she was finally sure that this was the true Long Chen. The previous Long Chen had definitely been possessed by the wine god. Girl, come and pick a path. Long Chen smiled towards Xia Yaoluo upon seeing three possible paths in front of them. If you call me girl again, I'll get angry. My name is Yaoluo. Being repeatedly called a girl by Long Chen made her feel like a small bum beetle. If Long Chen hadn't generously split half his wine with her, she would have already exploded. All right, Yaoluo, come pick a path. Long Chen corrected himself. Jokes should be stopped before they went too far. However, he truly wished to be her uncle so that he could call the emperor of the Grand Xia Big Brother. Why have me choose? Asked Xia Yaoluo. Because you are the envoy sent by the wine god. You are the fairy that will enlighten the wine god palace's disciples. So you choose. Long Chen smiled. Although he was just teasing her, Xia Yaoluo was happy to be called a fairy. HMPH. It'd be strange if anyone believed you. But even if all you said was nonsense. Thank you for winning back my face. Clearly, she was still very happy about how the wine god palace's disciple had bowed and apologized to her. There's no need to thank me. We're working together. So we must be sincere and honest with each other. Pick a path. Pushed Long Chen. Then this one. Xia Yaoluo pointed toward the central path. Long Chen put on an act of deep ponderment. Scratching his head and counting on his fingers. Good. We're walking the straight and narrow. To walk in the middle of the three great paths. Princess's directions can lead a person to the clouds and sky. Yes. This must be the path to get rich. Let's go. Xia Yaoluo looked at Long Chen chewing a piece of grass with a serious expression. They completely contradicted each other, and adding in his crazy words, Xia Yaoluo bent over in laughter. Princess, why are you laughing? Are you questioning my abilities to peer through the heavens and see through fate? Said Long Chen with a displeased expression. Please, stop teasing me. My stomach's starting to hurt from laughing. Your manner was pretty similar to those fellows from the Heavenly Fate Pavilion. Xia Yaoluo was almost unable to breathe as she laughed. There was even some light sweat on the tip of her nose, like a peach blossom touched with dew. Your people have a relationship with the Heavenly Fate Pavilion. Long Chen was caught off guard. No, but when the Grand Han's delegates come, some disciples from the Heavenly Fate Pavilion accompany them. They act very similar to what you just did, said Xia Yaoluo. Do you often have dealings with the Grand Han? Asked Long Chen. Not really. After all, the relationship between our two nations is a bit tense, so we don't have many interactions, said Xia Yaoluo disappointedly. I just don't understand why my father has to have such a tense relationship with the Grand Han. The Grand Han's people are so nice, and there are so many touching romantic stories from there that can make me cry. Both the men and women are so dedicated and faithful to each other. Xia Yaoluo's eyes became unfocused as she sank into her beautiful fantasies. Sometimes what you see is what people intentionally let you see. Sometimes what you hear is what people intentionally let you hear. If you want to understand a person or a nation, you can't just look at its exterior. That will cause your judgment to be gravely mistaken. Long Chen shook his head. What Long Chen hadn't expected was for Xia Yaoluo to immediately get enraged by his words. You, you're just spouting nonsense. You're clearly jealous of them to say such bad words about them. He finally lost his patience. Haha. <laughs> Jealous? In this world, 
No one can make me jealous. Furthermore, I disdain saying bad words about someone. It was your big brother who told me to advise you. But why would I want to do such a stupid thing? I'm good at killing people, but advising others isn't my forte. You're 18 now? When I was 18, I had already grown indifferent to life and death as I fought for my brothers and sisters. As for you, you're a brainless, stubborn fool who would rather believe in your own wishful thinking than see the truth. Do you realize you have two eyes and two ears? But how much do they get used? The heavens gave you a head for you to use it. Pigs always have ears, but their ears are big so that they listen to others without using their minds. In the end, when they are about to be slaughtered, they will not hesitate to send themselves to their deaths when called, sneered Long Chen. This girl had been completely brainwashed by the idiots of the Grand Han and could no longer see reason. If someone was really able to change her mind, it would be truly heaven-defying. Long Chen was unable to do such a thing. This work was too enraging. He was full of regret over his decision to help Xia Yanchang. Otherwise, he wouldn't be stuck in such an irritating position. You're the pig, raged Xia Yaoluo. I can't be bothered to say anything to you. If you can't be reasoned with, then don't come with me. Long Chen snorted. He was sick of this girl. Their intelligence was not on the same level. HMPH. I'm going to come with you and irritate you to the end of the earth. You're the pig. Xia Yaoluo clamped onto Long Chen's hand and pressed against his body. Long Chen tried unsuccessfully several times to throw her off. Of course, Long Chen wasn't using his real force. Although his cultivation base had been sealed, if he just used the power of his physical body, he would definitely be able to fling her off. But then she would be flung all the way back to the Imperial Palace. Seeing Xia Yaoluo clenching her teeth and the tears in her eyes, Long Chen's heart softened once more. Ah, why am I quiddling with a child? Long Chen couldn't help but shake his head. It seemed his magnanimity had degraded. Why did he have to take a child so seriously? All right, let's calm down. This is the Wine God Palace, and if we act like this, we'll be kicked out. Then we really will have no face left. Long Chen softened his tone. No, you have to apologize. Who said you could be so fierce and scold me? Xia Yaoluo refused to let go of Long Chen's arm, looking like she wouldn't let go even if she died. Fine, I was wrong. I shouldn't have been so fierce. I shouldn't have scolded you. Long Chen helplessly raised his hands in defeat, treating it like he was playing with a child. You, you. Xia Yaoluo suddenly began to really cry. Hey, did you mix things up? I apologized. Why are you crying? Long Chen was speechless. My father, my mother, my brother, none of them scolded me so viciously. But you, you said I was an idiot, and you said I was a pig. Xia Yaoluo began to cry harder and harder. From a young age, Xia Yaoluo had always been pampered due to her high talent, and she had rarely been chastised. Although Xia Yaoluo was willful and obstinate, she was kind inside. She just had never been sternly disciplined. That was why Long Chen's scolding immediately caused such a reaction. She hadn't cried when he had been scolding her because of her anger, but as soon as he apologized, she wasn't able to endure it any longer. Hey, don't make a fuss. This isn't the place to cry, said Long Chen. I don't care. You bullied me, wailed Xia Yaoluo. The wine god palace is a quiet place. Who is making a ruckus? Suddenly, a chiding voice rang out from ahead. Ah, it's a misunderstanding. This isn't a ruckus. My little sister was moved by the surroundings and decided to sing a song to express her reverence toward the wine god palace, called out Long Chen. The crying Xia Yaoluo immediately chuckled upon hearing this. Her emotions quickly shifted to become embarrassed, and she hastily wiped away her tears. My little sister's singing is very good, but in her excitement, she ended up off-key, which is why her singing sounded like crying. Please don't take offense, continued Long Chen. Long Chen then pulled Xia Yaoluo forward. All right, don't make a fuss. It's time to get back to work. Turning around a corner, they saw a man standing in front of a small pavilion, coldly looking at them. He was a handsome man, tall with graceful facial features. However, his eyes were filled with sadness. Although he looked to be in his twenties, that grief in his eyes spoke of great experiences and time lived. Your song is quite sad, a song of the pain in the heart. Because of it, I'd like to invite the two esteemed guests to try my wine said the man. Xia Yaoluo's expression became a bit unnatural upon hearing this evaluation. Everyone knew that she had been crying just now, but this person acted like he hadn't realized it. Please, go ahead. The pavilion's interior decoration was almost identical to the previous one, 
Only the person had changed, as well as the wine. There were two cups of clear wine that had already been poured. Yaluo, you should drink it first. This wine is very beneficial to you. Long Chen urged Xia Yaluo on, but he didn't reach for his own cup. Xia Yaluo carefully received her wine, and she once more drank it in three gulps. Her depressed mood was wiped away, and she couldn't help but smile as a feeling of joy welled up within her noveloon.com How miraculous! It can actually allow me to forget all my troubles and clear my heart, exclaimed Xia Yaluo. Sir, are you not going to try it? I see that the pain in your heart is not any less than mine. This wine can suppress the gloominess crushing your heart. It's very beneficial to your cultivation. The Winnemaker looked at Long Chen. Xia Yaluo seemed to have heard the funniest joke. How could it be possible for Long Chen to feel pain in his heart? He was clearly a bad person with a wicked heart. If this place wasn't the wine god palace and they weren't facing a disciple, she would have already left. The seven emotions and six desires of humanity are part of who we are. Pain. Bitterness. They are all precious memories. Why suppress them? If you are trying to use your power to completely erase those feelings, isn't that a betrayal to your past? Hence, many thanks for your kindness, but I won't be having any. Long Chen shook his head and pulled Xia Yaoluo away. Chapter 1185 Plundering Translator Born to be esteemed guest, please wait a moment. Your words of wisdom have greatly benefited me. Please, you must accept this small, small gift. That Winnemaker actually ran after them and took out a spatial ring. Your courtesy is admirable, but I don't deserve such an immense gift. Long Chen shook his head. You're too modest. The wisdom you've given me makes me feel shame. Back in the day, I was a martial cultivator. Falling into a trap, my Dao companion and I were besieged by multiple soul transformation experts and she fell at that time. I managed to flee, and after bitterly training in some strange arts, I killed the ones who caused her death one by one. But my lover was still dead and my heart devil proliferated, driving me insane. Those days were incredibly bitter. Eventually, I had a fated encounter with the wine god palace and by devoting myself to the wine god, I managed to shed my heart devil. However, I still felt pain day and night as I missed her. I made wine in order to forget that pain. Your reminder just now was the flash of insight I needed. I was simply trapping myself in my mind, and now the sky has cleared. In the future, I will be able to shed my suffering and find peace. It's all thanks to your blessing, said the Winnemaker respectfully. Hearing this person's story, both Long Chen and Xia Yaoluo were shocked. This disciple of the wine god palace had once been a soul transformation expert? This spatial ring contains some mundane items I gained before I fled to the wine god palace. I thought about throwing it away a long time ago to sever this karma, but my heart was never able to release it. Now, giving it to you can count as lifting a weight off my shoulders. Originally, other than wine, disciples such as I shouldn't possess anything. The gifts we send are also just wine. So, in order to dispel any remnant thoughts, I must get rid of this ring. Please, don't refuse said the Winnemaker sincerely. Oh, it's not wine. Why didn't you say so earlier? Long Chen thought that the Winnemaker was giving him the self-brewed wine, which he didn't need. But since the Winnemaker was sending him the treasures he had gained in the cultivation world, Long Chen naturally wouldn't refuse. Then many thanks. Long Chen received the spatial ring. I won't hold you up from your stroll. If you have time in the future, please come visit me again. When we have time. We'll definitely come to disturb you and try out your fine wine, said Long Chen. Once they were gone from the small pavilion, Long Chen's divine appearance vanished. He took out the spatial ring and took a look. I've struck gold. Long Chen jumped in shock. This Winnemaker had definitely been a big figure in the past. This spatial ring had dozens of king items, as well as various medicinal pills, cultivation techniques, and secret arts. Most importantly, he saw a huge mountain of Yuan spirit stones. That was what excited him the most. Long Chen, what's inside the spatial ring? Asked Xia Yaoluo curiously. Long Chen directly handed it to her so she could see for herself. But she merely glanced inside and disappointedly said, I thought there was going to be some treasure? Are these things useful? Long Chen rolled his eyes speechlessly. Why do I feel like you're someone who's never been hungry and don't know what it feels like? Perhaps a genius like you who has never been lacking cultivation resources will never understand the vexation of poor people like me. Do you know that each increase in resources for people with no background requires risking their lives? Why would you risk your life? Aren't you doing fine right now? Asked Xia Yaoluo. Long Chen gave up explaining it to her. 
Looking carefully in the spatial ring, he saw that there were many items inside, but now wasn't the time to take stock of them. The two of them continued forward and quickly arrived at another pavilion. This pavilion's doors were closed, and no one came out to invite them. That was very normal. The wine god palace's disciples spent most of their time making wine as their cultivation. They only occasionally waited outside their pavilions waiting for faded people to come and judge their wine. After walking past three pavilions, they encountered a female disciple of the wine god palace. This time, Zaya Yaluo took the initiative to greet her. This woman seemed to be very happy to have someone come and judge her wine, and she warmly invited the two of them in. However, when Zaya Yaluo was asked to judge her wine, she could only say that it was a good wine. As for what aspect of it was good exactly, she was unable to express it. Fortunately, there was a grand swindler like Long Chen who was proficient in the pill Dao. In truth, there were many similar parts to winna making and refining pills. No matter what kind of wine he encountered, he was able to say a few specific points about the winna making process. Other than that, he had an incredibly sharp spiritual perception from the nine star hegemon body art. He could clearly sense the realm contained within the wine and its effects. He would make a few accurate comments, as well as a few harsh comments. Whatever flaws were contained in their wine, he would describe them clearly in just a few sentences, delighting these disciples. It had to be known that the wine god palace's cultivation was a kind of mental realm and winemaking was their only method of cultivating. The wine god palace's disciples weren't afraid of others being frank and criticizing their wine. What they were afraid of was that others wouldn't be able to say anything specific about their wine, wasting it. As long as a person was able to accurately judge their wine, no matter how harsh their words were, they would be delighted. They continued through dozens of the wine god palace's disciples. Zaya Yaluo bore witness to Long Chen's masterful abilities. Each one of the wine god palace's disciples had unique styles of wine, and their characters were all extremely different. Some were refined and scholarly, some were sloppy like beggars, some were like fierce butchers, while some were like secluded hermits. To sum it up, there were all kinds and sorts. As for Long Chen, he was able to recite poetry back to the scholar, he could discuss life with the beggar, he could play a coarse finger-guessing game with the butcher, and he could speak about Buddhist allegories with the hermit. No matter who it was, he would be able to get them to give him their wine. The thing that shocked Zaya Yaluo the most was when Long Chen drank wine with the butcher. In the end, they drank so much that they were cursing coarsely, their spit flying everywhere. And in the end, the butcher gave Long Chen all of his best wine. It wasn't just the butcher. All those whose wine Long Chen drank, whether they were man or woman, old or young, were plundered by Long Chen. What made Zaya Yaluo want to prostrate herself toward Long Chen was that he didn't even need to open his mouth and ask for their wine. They would take the initiative to give it to him, as if not doing so would make them ashamed for a lifetime. As for Long Chen, he would always make a tactful refusal at first, but in the end, when the other side was about to get angry, he would reluctantly accept their gifts. This pattern made Zaya Yaluo want to beat him. After a long stroll, Zaya Yaluo had also gained a large pile of benefits but she didn't know that what she had obtained was not even a sliver of what Long Chen had received. These people gave Long Chen spatial rings filled with wine. After speaking with Long Chen, they felt like the clouds had parted. It was like they had transcended. At that time, Long Chen would subtly remind them that they had entered a new era and they should abandon all their old achievements. That was the only way to give them the courage to advance without looking back. It was unknown if those people really had transcended, but Long Chen definitely had. His primal chaos space was now filled with a mountain of wine jugs. Each time he obtained a spatial ring, he would use the primal chaos space to pull the wine jugs in and leave a tiny amount. Long Chen was truly immoral. He would then split that tiny amount with Zaya Yaluo evenly. Zaya Yaluo didn't even suspect him. Seeing Long Chen split his spoils evenly with her made her feel full of gratitude toward him, and she even forgot about all her previous displeasure. When the sky darkened, Long Chen and Zaya Yaluo left completely satisfied. Zaya Yaluo didn't even cause any fuss. She was smiling brightly, saying that when she got back, she would give her father and mother a pleasant surprise. Even in the imperial family, if they wanted to drink this kind of wine, they had to personally go to the wine god palace. Furthermore, the disciples' characters were odd, and they refused to sell their wine even to the emperor. On the way back, Zaya Yaluo held Long Chen's arm happily, almost making Long Chen feel flattered. When this girl wasn't being foolish, she was quite charming. 
Only once they left the Wine God Palace did Xia Yao let go of Long Chen's arm and return to the palace with the guards. Those guards were surprised to see the two of them smiling so brightly. When they had entered, they had appeared hostile to each other, just shy of actually fighting. The guards looked at each other silently. It seemed that whatever wine those two had drunk was definitely good wine. It was no wonder the Grand Xia's people always said they couldn't be lacking wine when trying to make relations. Long Chen, I really admire you. You know far more than my imperial tutor. Looking at the hundreds of jugs of wine in her spatial ring, a worshipful expression appeared on Xia Yaoluo's face. She could not be more excited. Any of these jugs of wine was enough to stun people. Right now, she was impatient to start showing them off. He, if you muddle along with me, I guarantee you'll have enough to drink for a lifetime. Being worshipped by a grand princess made Long Chen feel very refreshed inside. All right, then the next time you go, remember to bring me along. I won't accompany you to my brother's place. I'm going home. Xia Yaoluo pulled a cute face and then vanished like a wisp of smoke. HMPH, how disloyal. But I suppose she hasn't experienced the world yet. If I asked her to hold back showing off her wine, she'd probably explode. Long Chen followed the guards back to Xia Yanchong's residence. Although it was also part of the Imperial Palace, it was heavily guarded with countless formations. Without someone leading the way, he would constantly have to go through checkpoints. Brother Long, how were your gains today? Xia Yanchong had long since been waiting for him. As soon as he sensed him, he rushed over to meet him. Haha, <laughs> I made plentiful gains. Long Chen gave Xia Yanchong a gesture of victory. He had truly gained much today. Yao Luo has started to form a favorable opinion of you. Xia Yanchong was delighted. Ah, Long Chen was struck dumb. Looking at Xia Yanchong's delighted expression, Long Chen suddenly realized he had misunderstood. The gains the two of them were talking about were not quite the same. He had been so excited over his gains today that he had completely forgotten about the mission Xia Yanchong had entrusted him. He awkwardly said, I suppose it can count as taking one step in that direction. That's fine. That's good. We can't rush this. That girl is extremely defensive. Right now, I don't even dare to mention anything about the Grand Han around her or she explodes. Since you've only just met her, you should first gain her trust and temporarily not raise any sensitive topics. We don't want her to also feel defensive toward you, sighed Xia Yanchong. Long Chen bitterly smiled inside. She had already started forming defenses around her, and she hadn't exploded just once today. Come, brother Xia, I gained countless fine wines today. Have a taste. Long Chen took out jug after jug of wines marked with special symbols in front of Xia Yanchong's stunned gaze. Seeing those special marks, his eyes almost popped out. Chapter 1186 The Fierce Yang Butcher Tu Kianchang Translator Born to be Xia Yanchong was struck dumb as Long Chen took out jug after jug of wine marked with special symbols. Each wine made by the Wine God Palace's disciples represented their life and experience. They each contained a different realm and comprehension and every aspect of their taste was filled with profundities. Therefore, drinking them was not simply drinking wine. This was a way of communicating with the heavenly deos. Now, there were dozens of small wine jugs placed before Xia Yanchong and Long Chen. The two of them carefully savored them and began to discuss the insights within the wine. Xia Yanchong was incredibly excited. Sampling and comprehending another person's life from the viewpoint of a spectator allowed him to get closer to the heavenly deos. PFFT what wine is this? How can it be so hot and fiery? When he tasted the final wine, Xia Yanchong almost spat it out. He hastily covered his mouth, filled with shock. The wine was like lava pouring down his throat. A terrifying energy spread through him, making him feel like he was about to ignite. Savor it properly, chortled Long Chen. Back then, he had also been like this, almost causing a certain fierce-looking fellow to laugh at him. Xia Yanchong managed to swallow it. When the wine reached his stomach, it immediately felt like millions of tiny blades were stabbing through his body. But very quickly, the energy of the wine scattered through his meridians. When it reached the ends of his meridians, another burst of pain erupted inside him. He felt like his meridians would explode. It was as though a runner saw a mountain blocking their way and decided to charge right through it. But as a result, the mountain didn't collapse and the energy rebounded even fiercer. First the energy had overflowed and spread through his body and now it was gathering once more. Not good. Xia Yanchong's expression changed. The wine energy was crashing toward his dantian wildly. His aura was exploding out of control. If he allowed that energy to explode, then his residence would be blown apart. 
Fortunately, Xia Yanchong had a powerful cultivation base and he forcibly restrained his aura, but rumbling sounds came from his body as though volcanoes were exploding within him. It lasted for several breaths before slowly stopping. Xia Yanchong was filled with shock. What terrifying energy, what great comprehension, and what a domineering will. He, I was the same as you, brother Xia. I almost embarrassed myself. That fierce-looking fatty really has some skill. Long Chen nodded. This wine had been made by the butcher. A fierce-looking fatty? Are you talking about the fierce Yang butcher? Tu Kai and Shang, cried Xia Yanchong with shock. I don't know, but he was surnamed too. He told me to call him Fatty too, said Long Chen. From the start, he had felt like that butcher's origins were as big as his stomach. Now seeing Xia Yanchong's shocked expression, he supposed his guess had been right. Brother Long, let me tell you about him. 3,500 years ago, with just his own power, he annihilated one of the ancient races. In just a single night, he killed hundreds of soul transformation ancient race experts, and even their race leader was killed. That race leader was in existence on the same level as your Zuanshan Dao sect Zuan master. His name of the fierce Yang Butcher came from that time. Having one of their ancient races annihilated infuriated the ancient race alliance. They immediately issued a kill order on him, and all the ancient race's experts moved out to kill him. Encircled by them, Tu Kai and Chang fled, almost dying several times. He was heavily injured, but he still managed to escape. After recovering, he then crazily attacked the ancient races once more, annihilating seven of their races. Those races had all participated in the hunt for him. As a result, the ancient race alliance was once more infuriated, and they moved out in huge numbers to kill him. But Tu Kai and Chang had grown smarter, and he vanished, not giving them any chance to surround him again. As he fled, he also launched counterattacks. In three years, the ancient races lost three experts on the level of their race leaders and hundreds of soul transformation experts. In the end, Tu Kai and Chang had killed too many of the ancient race experts. Hence, someone had gone to Heavenly Fate Island to get the information about Tu Kai and Chang's whereabouts. Just as the experts of the ancient races were about to kill Tu Kai and Chang, the Wine God Palace's people appeared and saved him. From then on, Tu Kai and Chang became a disciple of the Wine God Palace. Xia Yanchang respectfully and worshipfully told Long Chen about Tu Kai and Chang's history. The ancient races were really willing to swallow their anger and let the Wine God Palace take him away. Long Chen couldn't believe it. The real question is would the ancient races dare to try to stop them? The Wine God Palace has a true God's inheritance. Brother Long, don't look down on the Wine God Palace's disciples because they only make wine and you can't see their cultivation basis. The majority of those people were all stunning experts of their time. People who had shaken their era. That is why they all have their own different insights toward life. And the wine they make is unique to themselves. Others are all groping around within the heavenly deos. While they have already reached another realm. The wine god palace's power is such that not just anyone can provoke them. Do you know how powerful Pill Valley is? When the wine god palace kicked them out back then. They didn't even dare to let out a fart. If even Pill Valley didn't dare to go against them, what qualifications does the ancient race alliance have to challenge the Wine God Palace? They are just some descendants who have been abandoned by the Zuan beasts. Furthermore, the ancient race alliance never liked the human race. They even refuse to admit they are the human race's descendants. They only say they are the Zuan beasts' descendants, and yet the Zuan beasts don't want them. I digress. Let's continue speaking of the Wine God Palace. The Wine God Palace's disciples have already abandoned the martial path in pursuit of the Wine Deo. They abandon suffering and obtain happiness. What they seek is their own chance to become an immortal or a god. But that doesn't represent that they don't have any martial might. As long as others don't provoke them, they won't do anything. Even if someone offends them, they'll normally just expel that person. If no one blasphemes the Wine God, the Wine God Palace's disciples are forbidden from killing, explained Xia Yanchang. Long Chen had an urge to slap himself. It seemed he had gone a bit too far this time. Each one of them was a big figure, and he had actually bragged to them about his wine judging skills and swindled them of their wine. Thinking of that, he began to sweat. This time, he really had been stupid. Those people had to have all gone through their own unique experiences, or they wouldn't have been able to comprehend their own deos. In truth, Long Chen didn't realize that it was precisely because he hadn't taken their status seriously that they had welcomed him. In their eyes, the Wine Deo was everything. They no longer cared about the martial path or their old accomplishments on it. 
If Long Chen had instead revered them because of their status and cultivation base, they would have had a bad reaction to him. Furthermore, by using his pill sovereign memories and his senses from the Nine Star Hegemon body art, his bragging and big words had ended up allowing them to find their weaknesses. That was why they had been so generous as to give all their fine wine to him. When Tu Kian Chang was chased down, he was only at the Soul Transformation Realm. He fought across realms to kill Life Star experts. That shook practically all the central plains. His wine is his Dao, fiery and fierce, domineering to the peak. It is filled with the will to advance forward obstinately. I cultivate the undefeatable Dao, so this wine is extremely beneficial to me. Brother Long, this jug of wine. Can you leave it for me to comprehend? Xia Yanchang thickened his face, but he still felt a burning sensation on it as he asked this. His face was completely red. His brother had invited him to drink wine, and now he wanted him to not drink it and leave it to him. That was a bit shameless. Long Chen didn't walk the undefeatable Dao, so drinking it might be addicting, but it was wasteful. If the wine was given to Xia Yanchang, it would allow him to walk further on the undefeatable Dao making his aura even fiercer and more powerful. He, Brother Zaya, don't worry, just drink it, it is nothing. Even your little sister has five jugs of this wine Long Chen smiled. What, that's a complete waste, I'm going to get it right now. Zaya Yanchang immediately shot up. Long Chen hastily grabbed him and said, Don't, I gave that wine to her, so how can I take it back? There's plenty of wine here, let alone drinking it all. You wouldn't be able to use it all up even if you used it for bathing. Long Chen took out ten wine barrels the size of a person. All of them were the special wine made by the fierce Yang Butcher. Tu Kai and Shang. This wine was even better than what they had just drunk. What we drank just now, to use the words of Fatty Tu, is used for nothing more than rinsing our mouths. This is the true wine. Long Chen opened a bucket and poured out two bowls of wine in front of Xia Yunchong's shocked gaze. When the wine entered the bowl, it began to emit blue flames. Space twisted slightly around it. The wine was roiling within the bowl. Come, try some. Long Chen raised his wine bowl. The two of them touched their bowls and then drank the wine in one gulp. Long Chen had drunk it before, so he had long since been prepared. But Xia Yunchong, despite also having prepared himself, had still underestimated this wine. The clothing around his forearms and calves exploded, and blood began to spurt out of his arms and feet. At the same time, all his hair stood on end. Long Chen nodded in praise upon seeing this. Xia Yanchang was truly worthy of being someone who walked the undefeatable Dao. He had managed to bear that terrifying impact. When Long Chen had drunk this wine, if it hadn't been for Tu Kai and Chang's interference, he would have caused the pavilion they had been in to explode. But Xia Yanchang was able to slowly release the immense energy through his extremities to cushion it. This meant his control over energy was even better than Long Chen's. What a domineering will. He is definitely worthy of being called the fierce Yang Butcher. Brother Long, I have to go into seclusion to digest these insights, said Xia Yanchang. You can take all of this. I still have more. Long Chen gave all the wine he had taken out to Xia Yanchang, delighting him. Originally, he had been a bit worried about not having enough wine to comprehend the profundities within it, but now he had more than enough. Xia Yanchang said his seclusion would probably last a few days. He asked what plans Long Chen had and whether or not he was going to accompany Xia Yaoluo. If Long Chen wanted, Xia Yanchang could arrange some leisurely activities for them. But Long Chen said he didn't have any time and also went into seclusion. This wine he had worked hard to swindle out of them wasn't used just to satisfy his stomach. Chapter 1187 Shocking Gains Translator Born to be a drop of medicinal elixir merged with a ball of wine and was instantly ignited. A terrifying burst of energy exploded. That fierce Yang Butcher's wine really is crazy. Once I added some medicinal energy, what it becomes can't even be called medicinal wine. It's poison wine. If someone really drank this, they would undoubtedly die. Long Chen looked in shock at the raging ball of liquid that was floating in the air and releasing fierce fluctuations. It had taken him many tests to reach this point of successfully merging the medicinal elixir with this fierce wine. He extracted a drop and placed it on his tongue. He immediately felt like a bomb had exploded in his mouth. His ears, nose, and mouth all began to emit smoke, and tears streamed down his face. That wasn't from emotion. The medicinal effect has increased by almost a hundred times. This isn't just cooperating, it's a metamorphosis. With such a terrifying medicinal effect, its side effects are probably huge. Ack, fine, I'll try someone else's wine. 
Long Chen gave up on using the wine made by Tu Kai and Shang. His wine was too domineering and was not suitable to be refined into medicinal wine. Long Chen chose a wine made by a female disciple. Her wine focused on nourishing the soul, like a spring rain washing over the world, a realm of returning vitality to a withered world. She had previously been a wood cultivator, and her wine contained her comprehension of life. Long Chen tried combining dozens of soul-nourishing medicinal pills with it. This was a very complicated process. When trying to merge medicinal pills with wine, the proportion, the control, the sequence, etc. could all affect the final result. Even if the medicine managed to merge with the wine, the medicinal wine's effect might not be stable enough. It would still need to go through repeated tests and experiments to maximize its effect. Despite his skill in medicine and despite being able to figure out everything about the wine's composition, merging them together was still incredibly difficult. It had to be known that when Pill Valley was cooperating with the Wine God Palace back then, it took them thousands of years to create just over 10 medicinal wines. From this result, it could be seen just how difficult it was to merge two different arts. However, Long Chen wasn't directly refining medicinal wine, but having the wine work together with his medicinal pills. It was a bit simpler. Instead of creating a whole new painting, he was taking a painting and adding a few things to make it even more beautiful. But even though he was just searching for a way to have them work together, the concoction would have several times their effects, and the maximum effect he could achieve was ten times. After all, this kind of process couldn't match refining medicinal wine from scratch. This kind of cooperative medicinal wine would have huge side effects once the medicinal effect multiplied by over ten times. Long Chen didn't have the time to research those side effects, so he could only give up on those abnormal medicinal wines. He spent three whole days creating seven types of medicinal wines. Five of them could be used now, while two of them needed more observation time. Of these five, there were two that satisfied him the most. One was something he called the spirit nourishing soul raising wine. Its nourishing effect on the soul was extremely powerful. The other one was called the muscle strengthening bone hardening wine. The wine had come from a body cultivator disciple in the wine god palace, and Long Chen managed to strengthen its effect even more with medicinal pills. These two wines were both ten times more effective than their predecessors and also very beneficial to him. Not only were they more effective than pills, but they also tasted good. To tell the truth, after years of eating pills, Long Chen had grown completely sick of them. Now that he could change the horrible taste, he felt more blessed than ever. Because researching more medicinal wine would take too long, Long Chen moved on. He opened the spatial ring the expert from the wine god palace had given him. Haha, <laughs> an arm bracer king item. I'll take this. A golden arm bracer appeared in Long Chen's hand. Ancient runic lines were carved into it, and it was as heavy as a mountain. This was definitely something good for Long Chen. With this arm bracer, he could block the attack of a king item with his arm instead of using his saber. Sabers focused more on offense than defense, so switching to defense placed him in a passive position. Damn, even these two fur boots are king items. Two fur boots appeared in his hands. On the outside, they didn't even look like king items, but there were countless runes inside. Even the souls had a formation supporting them. All right, hopefully, the previous owner didn't have foot fungus. Long Chen took off his boots and put them on. Buzz, he had only just put them on when their runes lit up. They had originally been a bit too big, but they slowly shrank to perfectly fit him. He kicked the ground and a fear scale erupted. As Long Chen poured in his spiritual yuan, the boots began to shine and space started to distort. He hastily pulled back his spiritual yuan. So this isn't a weapon king item, but as long as I have enough spiritual yuan, I can basically teleport. Long Chen was shocked by this ability. This was his first time wearing equipment on the king item level. Now he found that not all king items needed a jade core to activate. The boots were on his feet, while his arm bracer was covered by his sleeve. No one would be able to tell what they were from the outside, and he also found that they didn't affect his movements. He was delighted and hastily looked at the rest of the king items. However, he didn't find anything else that suited him. The majority of these king items were weapons, as well as some sets of armor. Long Chen didn't like heavy armor, because their powerful defense sacrificed agility. He didn't like that way of fighting. Heavy armor was really only suitable for group battles, especially those in the vanguard. But it wasn't suitable for fighting on his own. Looking at the other treasures, he saw quite a few medicinal pills. But he wasn't interested in those. He also found quite a few secret tomes. 
They ranged from introductory battle skills to profound magical arts. Many of these arts were ones that built on top of each other to grow stronger. Long Chen couldn't help but sigh inside. No wonder that person had said he hadn't been willing to throw this away even after all these years. He had probably once had a dream of forming his own sect to leave behind his inheritance. Oh, what's this? Long Chen suddenly took out an ancient beast hide. It was dried up with age. The beast hide depicted a map, and there were two circular areas that were like the eyes of a skull. Seeing that, he suddenly found that the more he looked at this beast hide, the more he felt it looked like a human skull. At the space where the eyebrows met, there was a small mark. It was a very strange mark. It wasn't an immortal character, and he wasn't able to understand what it meant. This thing's probably incredibly old. Even the power of the beast hide is so great. However, just what is this map for? Probably only he knows. But now that he's given me this spatial ring, it means he wants to sever all his ties to it. I can't ask him. Ag, I'll just put it aside. If it's to be mine, it can't run away. And if it's not to be mine, then I wouldn't even be able to find it. There's no need to waste time thinking over it. Long Chen shook his head and put the map away. Ha ha ha. Now for what I really wanted. The Yuan Spirit Stones. Long Chen directly moved all the Yuan Spirit Stones in the spatial ring into his primal chaos space. Taking a rough estimate, he guessed there were around 1 billion 200 million Yuan Spirit Stones. He knew that these Yuan Spirit Stones were not just that person's. They were the result of him destroying several sects when he had been taking vengeance for his loved one's death. Looking at these Yuan Spirit Stones, Long Chen couldn't help but feel that the Zhuanshan Dao sect really had declined. One of the three great sects of the heavens had ended up so poor that this one person had more Yuan spirit stones than the entire Zhuanshan Dao sect it really was as the Zuan master had said. If the Zhuanshan Dao sect continued to endure as they had been, they wouldn't have been able to do so for much longer. Long Chen had Huo Long and Lai Long devour these Yuan spirit stones, and then he began extracting the Yuan spiritual energy. His 108,000 immortal platforms began to rapidly revolve, crazily absorbing that energy. Runes appeared on top of them one by one. Two days later, his immortal platform shook and grew another level. He had reached the fourth vestige of foundation forging. His immortal platforms were different from other people's. Each layer of their platforms would be smaller than the last. But Long Chen's layers were the same size, making his immortal platform cylinders. At the center was the image of a flower with 13 petals. When he reached the fourth vestige, his immortal platforms trembled fiercely and then compressed. After one day, they had shrunk to a slightly smaller size, but the compressed immortal platforms were more solid, and as they revolved, a faint light came from them. At the same time, Long Chen felt each one of his immortal platforms had strengthened to the point that they were now several times stronger than when he had been at the third heaven stage. This didn't delight him. As his immortal platforms strengthened, so did his physical body. However, he found that the power of his physical body was not quite able to match the power of his immortal platforms now that they had grown so much stronger. The problem lay in the fifth star. Without condensing the fifth star, his physical body wouldn't even be able to endure the power of the nine star hegemon body art. Now that he had reached the fourth heaven stage, he had stepped into the mid foundation forging realm. Right now, his physical body was still strong enough to keep up with his immortal platforms. But what about the fifth, sixth? and 7th heaven stages, and then there was the 10th heaven stage and beyond. According to his experience, his body would go through heaven toppling changes upon reaching that level. If he tried to use his immortal platforms at that time, wouldn't he just blow himself up? I can't continue like this. If the 5th star refuses to appear, then I need to think of some other way to strengthen my physical body. But the Azure Dragon reverse scale is way too strong. With my current power, let alone subduing, just broaching its outer defenses would be impossible. What am I supposed to do? Long Chen had mixed feelings now. As he was racking his brain for ways to strengthen his physical body, Xia Yaoluo came over. Chapter 1188 Four Nations Ancient Remnant Translator Born to be Long Chen. I've been waiting for you for two days. If you still didn't come out, I'd have charged in. Long Chen had only just left his seclusion room when he saw the impatient Xia Yaoluo outside. Aren't I busy bitterly cultivating so that I can reach 17th princess's hide as soon as possible? What? Do you need me for something? Don't tell me that you used up all your wine. Don't even think about getting any from me. Warned Long Chen suddenly. HMPH. Am I that kind of person? Furthermore, my wine is still all with me. 
I only gave a bit to my father and mother to taste. The rest, others can only look at them without tasting, said Xia Yaoluo. Good, good. Long Chen sighed with relief, causing Xia Yaoluo to stamp her feet in anger. HMPH, from your miserly appearance, I'd say drinking your wine is like drinking your blood. Is it worth it to act so worried? Xia Yaoluo looked at Long Chen disdainfully. HMPH, if I'm so miserly, do you think I'd have given you a portion of my wine? Demanded Long Chen. Fine, I won't argue with you. I almost ended up forgetting my imperial father wants to see you, said Xia Yaoluo. Why does big brother want to see me? Asked Long Chen. Xia Yaoluo glared at him and strictly warned. My imperial father is a very harsh person. If you dare to say such a thing in front of him, he might kill you right there and then. You won't even have a place to cry. Really? He's that vicious? He'd kill someone for telling a joke. Long Chen acted shocked. My imperial father is the most merciless person I know. He even killed two of his sons. Do you think he'd care about an outsider's life? A somewhat afraid and disgusted expression appeared in Xia Yaoluo's eyes when she spoke about her father. Long Chen jumped. An emperor would really be so vicious as to kill his sons? I don't believe you. HMPH. What's not to believe? He tossed a few teenagers out in the world for tempering, and they returned to the Yellow Springs. Although he didn't personally kill them. What's the difference? Snorted Xia Yaoluo. Long Chen said, There are many things you don't understand. All people care about their children. While you lost two brothers, have you ever thought that your father also lost two sons? He feels even worse than you. It is this mercilessness of his that allows you to live a carefree life. If you want to hate someone, you should hate the enemies that threatened the Grand Xia at all times. I don't care about your grand reasonings. Hurry up and come along. Xia Yaoluo set off leading Long Chen. On the way, all the guards that saw them bowed. It wasn't long before they arrived in front of a palace hall. Xia Yaoluo looked at it and said, reporting to my imperial father, Long Chen has arrived. Come in. The voice was flat and deep, like a powerful drum. It inspired reverence. Xia Yaoluo slowly retreated. Before leaving, she gave Long Chen a throat-cutting gesture and put on a dead face. Long Chen's heart warmed. She was warning him to be careful. Her father was temperamental, and if he wasn't careful, his head would be cut off. Her heart wasn't bad. The palace hall was extremely impressive and also sacred. In front of it were two huge stone lions that looked alive. They were like two guardian beasts staring at Long Chen, emitting their own terrifying pressure. Long Chen walked up the stone steps and entered the palace hall. But what he didn't expect was that the grand dragon throne, red carpet, chancellors, and the other royal items that should have been present within the core of the palace were nowhere to be found. The palace hall was extremely bare. There was simply a figure quietly sitting at the center of the room. The rest of the room was so spacious and empty that it made a person uneasy. Long Chen had only just stepped in when he saw a pair of eyes. In that instant, he felt himself become extremely minute as if he was a speck of dust floating amongst the stars. Long Chen greet senior, said Long Chen respectfully. Come and sit, said that person. Yes, Long Chen obediently sat in front of him. Even with his unrestrained character, Long Chen didn't dare to do anything wanton in front of this person. He definitely didn't dare to call him big brother. To be able to maintain a calm heart within my domain is impressive. The man nodded. At this close distance, Long Chen saw that he appeared to be around 40 years old. His face was somewhat similar to Xia Yunchong's. But this person was different from Xia Yunchong in that his noble heir had reached a pinnacle. A vague image of a dragon floated behind him, shocking Long Chen. So you're even able to see the manifestation of the dragon vein. As expected, you're not so simple. The middle-aged man looked at Long Chen with some surprise. Then with even greater surprise, he exclaimed, You have true dragon essence blood within you. Senior's vision is truly divine. All my possessions are easily seen through. Long Chen bitterly smiled. This was the person with the greatest authority within the Grand Xia. He was truly terrifying Novaloon.com I didn't see it. I sensed it. Within my grand Zaya, there is a condensed form of karmic luck protected by a dragon vein. That's why I could sense the dragon blood within your body. The middle-aged man frowned. You should be careful. Your dragon blood isn't very high tire, but it's extremely pure. If the Zuan beasts learn of it, it'll probably be very troublesome. Many thanks for your warning, senior. This junior understands. Thank Long Chen. When he had encountered Cloud's mother, she had also warned him to be careful of the Zuan beasts. Now that even the Emperor of the Grand Xia would warn him, 
It seemed his true dragon essence blood really would cause big trouble in the future. Calling me senior is a bit too much. However, big brother is also not too suitable. My name is Yu Yang, so you can call me Uncle Yang, said the Grand Xia's Emperor, Xia Yu Yang. Long Chen could only force a smile. It seemed his little joke was no secret to him. Uncle Yang, please don't blame me. That was just a joke with Yao Luo. It's fine. Young people should be less reserved, or they wouldn't be called youngsters. I called you over to inform you that the Four Nations Ancient Remnant is about to open. You should prepare yourself. When the time comes, you can go together with Chang'e and the others. The Four Nations Ancient Remnant, asked Long Chen. Yes, Chang'e will tell you the details. Other than that, the delegation from the Grand Han will be arriving in two days, and you'll be in charge of receiving them said Xia Yuyang. Me? Receive them. Long Chen felt like he had misheard. Correct. You. I heard that in the Zhuangshan Dao sect. You received the heaven-suppressing magic sects people very well. You were very enthusiastic and free with them, allowing them to return to their sect better off than when they left. That's why I feel like you're the best person for this task. Xia Yuyang looked at Long Chen with a smile that was not quite a smile. Long Chen instantly understood that Xia Yuyang had investigated him and knew about what had happened in the Zhuangshan Dao sect. His information source was truly amazing. However, this little one isn't. Long Chen didn't want to be the center of attention here. He would rather be a quiet, random passerby on the streets. You've already called me uncle. So you are a member of the Grand Xia. I've already prepared the identity plate. Xia Yuyang gave him a jade plate. After receiving it, Long Chen saw that it read, Grand Xia National Protector, Great General Long Chen. National Protector? Isn't that a bit too exaggerated? I don't have that much ability. Long Chen bitterly smiled. I trust you have that ability. If my guess isn't wrong, at least half the reason for the Grand Han's delegation is due to you. If you want to endure, you can choose not to take this title. But no matter how I look at you, I don't think you're that kind of person. Rather than waiting until the conflict erupts, why not be more direct? Skip the pretenses and get right to the fighting, said Xia Yuyang. Putting it like this, Long Chen did agree. Furthermore, wasn't being continuously provoked until he wanted to explode before retaliating just self-torture? It was better to give them a direct slap in the face. All right, I know what to do. Uncle Yang, don't worry. I will definitely live up to your expectations. Long Chen laughed wickedly. He was most fond of being the fox that exploited the tiger's power. As for Yao Luo, please do your best, sighed Xia Yuyang. Even if a ruler had to be emotionless, he wasn't able to sever his feelings for his children. I will do my best, Long Chen nodded. But inside, Long Chen was grumbling. If Xia Yuyang wanted him to go and fight, he wouldn't even frown. But when it came to emotions, he didn't have any assurance in being able to change that stubborn girl's mind. She was too stubborn and too brainwashed. He would only be able to take things step by step. Returning to Xia Yunchong's residence, when he learned of the Four Nations Ancient Remnant, he jumped in shock. The so-called Four Nations Ancient Remnant referred to a remnant of the Immortal Era. Legend said that it was left behind when a supreme expert ascended to become an immortal. This remnant was its own world. It was said it was very possible for it to contain the records of that supreme expert and their inheritance. However, this remnant was damaged during the Great Battle in the Immortal Era. Part of it broke, and it was squeezed into a spatial wall. When this spatial wall weakened, disciples at the Foundation Forging Realm and below could enter from the Martial Heaven continent. They could enter and search the remnant. However, the amount of time they had was very short. According to past experience, they would only have seven days. Because a portion of the remnant had fractured off, if they were unable to leave within seven days, the exit would close and they would never be able to leave. Xia Yanchong said that the supreme expert had left it behind when he ascended, and so quite a few treasures were waiting for destined people to find them. The Four Nations ancient remnant opened at random times without pattern. They could only constantly wait, but before the spatial wall weakened, it would release a few fluctuations in advance. That allowed them to calculate a rough estimate of when it would open. After patiently spending three days working on his medicinal wines, someone came over to tell Long Chen that the Grand Han's delegation was about to arrive. Chapter 1189 Han Wenjin Translator Born to be Long Chen stood in silver armor at the top of Grand Xia City's gates. Thousands of imperial guards were standing behind him with their armor shining brightly. The path to the gates had been perfectly cleaned and following the etiquette of receiving a diplomatic delegation, they had an army quietly standing there. 
What's going on? They're still not here? It's been over an incense stick's worth of time since the scheduled time. Long Chen frowned. Reporting to the Great General. The Grand Han's people are often late by up to three incense sticks worth of time, said one of the high-ranking officers. He was very familiar with the Grand Han's style. Ah, is that so? Then it's simple. Long Chen was enraged upon hearing this. He disliked people who didn't know how to be punctual. Did they think they could make him wait? That would be giving them far too much face. All right brothers, we're taking the rest of the day off. Everyone go back and seal the city gates, ordered Long Chen. They thought they could be bigger posers than him? He directly ordered the city gates closed. Great general. The other high-ranking officers all jumped. Was he crazy? It's fine. I will take responsibility for any consequences. There are some people who just can't be indulged. Close the gates, declared Long Chen. The Grand Han's imperial carriage has arrived. Just at this moment, a snow-white horse emitting a powerful aura appeared. It pulled a grand carriage as it rushed toward the city gates. Great general. They've arrived, said one of the officers. So what? We're off duty. Close the gates. No one is allowed to open them, said Long Chen as he began taking off his armor. My Grand Han's imperial carriage has arrived. Why are the gates closed? Are you not going to come out and greet us? Amongst the hundreds of guards around the carriage, a man whose face was as big as a flat cake opened his mouth. Sorry, you've come late. We've already stopped working. If you want, you can go through the small gate to the side. Long Chen shrugged helplessly. At this time, he had already taken off his imperial armor and was in casual dress, indicating he wasn't on duty. You, how can my Grand Han's prince walk in through the gate for commoners? You are trying to humiliate us, roared that person. What's wrong with commoners? Can you not walk the same path as them? Well, they also eat food, drink water, and breathe air. Are you going to stop doing that as well? TCH, do you have a problem with your head? You're the ones who arrived late. So who do you think is to blame? Let me make things clear to you. I'm already off duty. So either walk through the side door, or go back to wherever you came from. Long Chen didn't give them any chance to reply. He directly turned and left. Long Chen's departure dumbfounded the other guards and officials. It seemed this didn't conform with the Grand Zaya's etiquette. To refuse its guests outside the door would affect the Grand Zaya's image. But their leader had already left and they didn't dare to go directly against his orders and open the gates on their own. They just stood there blankly. This Long Chen seems to be doing quite well in the Grand Zaya. Within the carriage, an extraordinarily handsome man with pretty features stared at the city gates indifferently. This handsome man was one of the famed three monarchs of the Grand Han, Han Wenjin. He was also one of the Grand Han's imperial princes. He probably wants to obtain the Grand Zaya's protection, which is why he's hiding inside said an elder beside Han Wenjin. This elder was surprisingly the master of the Heavenly Fate Pavilion, Zuan Jizi. After the Zuan master's slap in the face, he hadn't been able to find any way to handle Long Chen. He had decided to follow Han Wenjin on his trip to the Grand Zaya this time. His target was Long Chen. If Long Chen didn't die, he wouldn't be able to set his mind at ease. These days, he was always extremely tense, afraid that Long Chen would reveal what he had done. Compared to Long Chen, Hua Shiaya wasn't worth the panic. She had her large Hua family and had no choice but to consider her family's safety first. So she wouldn't dare to go against him. However, Long Chen was different. His parents in the eastern wasteland had vanished. His family was gone. And he was free to do whatever he wanted. Such people were the most frightening. It's unexpected that Long Chen actually managed to get his own official position in the Grand Zaya. He's intentionally making things hard on us. He already killed one of the members of my Grand Han Imperial family despite our warning. And now he even dares to humiliate us by stopping me in front of the city. This suicidal bastard deserves a thousand deaths, snorted Han Wenjin. The four ancient nations always maintained a subtle balance, refusing to raise their weapons against each other. It truly was an excellent decision to hide here. Furthermore, it's not convenient for me to force things within Grand Zaya City. I'll need to take my time planning how to handle him. Moreover, our main goal is to form a good relationship with the Wine God Palace this time, said Zuan Jizi. The Heavenly Fate Pavilion had a grand position within the Grand Han, and Zuan Jizi's status was almost on the same level as the Grand Han's emperor. So he also didn't need to have so many misjivings when speaking to Han Wenjin. Pavilion Master, what do you think we should do? Are we supposed to just accept being given the cold shoulder? Han Wenjin frowned slightly. Now it was a bit awkward. 
Zuan Jizi said. Long Chen is just a scoundrel without any education or skills. Trying to reason with him is simply impossible. We definitely can't go through the side door or we'll be laughing stocks. So we should just retreat for now and send someone to tell them that we'll come again tomorrow. But we definitely can't arrive late. Or Long Chen will be happy to close the gates on us once more. All right then. I'll let that idiot be pleased for now. Said Han Wenjin icily as he looked at the tightly closed gates. Yes. Other than that. Be careful. I've hidden my cultivation base so that no one knows I've come. Make sure to be careful with your movements so that I don't get exposed. We don't want to end up ruining our true business. Warned Zhu and Jizzy solemnly. Don't worry, pavilion master. Disciple understands. Just like that. Under the sight of countless citizens of the Grand Xia, Han Wenjin's carriage left with his large procession. Long Chen returned to the palace. He was in the midst of drinking with Xia Yanchong when Xia Yaoluo furiously stamped in. Long Chen, why did you refuse Han Wenjin at the gates? Do you know how long I was waiting for? Raged Xia Yaoluo. At this time, Xia Yaoluo was dressed in thick imperial splendor. Her hair was tied in a high knot, and her face had been painted very elegantly, making her even more beautiful than normal. But at this time, her beautiful face only contained anger as she shouted at Long Chen. Xia Yanchong's expression sank. As soon as Han Wenjin was mentioned, he would get angry. Moreover, Seeing Xia Yaoluo had gone to such an extent to prepare for their enemy, his fury immediately soared. Sensing that Xia Yanchong was about to explode, Long Chen hastily grabbed him. Anger was unable to solve problems. Instead, it would just make things worse. Yaoluo, I wasn't doing this to make things hard on him. I was simply acting in accordance with my grand Xia's etiquette system. If it had been up to me, just to give you face, I wouldn't have minded waiting several days let alone a few incense sticks worth of time. But this matter affected the relations between the two nations. So I had to carry out my official duty. I couldn't let my emotions get the better of me. So please don't blame me, said Long Chen. Oh, it's not because of me that you intentionally didn't let him in. Xia Yaoluo was now a bit sorry. You're overthinking things. I have no enmity with him. So why would I target him? Furthermore, I also want to see what he looks like to have so many maidens infatuated with him. In truth, I'm a bit competitive, laughed Long Chen. Only now did Xia Yaoluo's fury vanish. But thinking of how she had acted out just now, she was too embarrassed and slipped away. This girl is getting more and more overboard. Xia Yanchong's expression was still dark. Brother Xia, you don't understand her romantic feelings. When a person likes another person, they'll become crazy and lose all their wits said Long Chen helplessly. At this time, Long Chen received an imperial edict saying that the Grand Han's delegation would arrive tomorrow morning, and he would be in charge of receiving them. The next morning, Long Chen was once more standing at the top of the city gates. This time, Han Wenjin obediently came on time. It was still the same carriage and the same hundred plus guards. When Han Wenjin walked out of his carriage, Long Chen saw his oval face, and despite feeling disdain for him, he had no choice but to admit he truly was beautiful, but he couldn't see any hint of manliness on his face. With sixteen maidens waiting on him as he stepped off the carriage, Long Chen almost mistook him for a woman. I am the Grand Xia's national protector, Great General Long Chen. I represent the Grand Xia's imperial family and Grand Xia city's citizens in welcoming the Grand Han. Long Chen held a document in his hands at the top of the gates, and he began to read off of it. This was an etiquette that he didn't quite care about. In any case, he just said whatever was written on it. After going over the whole lengthy document, his mouth was starting to feel numb. Only then did he walk over to Han Wenjin. Both sides exchanged gifts and then entered the city. I've long since heard of your great name, Long Chen. I never expected to encounter you within the Grand Xia, said Han Wenjin as he followed Long Chen into the city. I've also heard of the three monarchs' names. Seeing you in person is the blessing of three lifetimes. Long Chen smiled as he spouted absolute nonsense. I heard that you're a core disciple of the Zhuanshan Dao sect. Why would you come all the way to the Grand Xia? Are you trying to move to a better position? Asked Han Wenjin with a smile. HMPH. I knew you would want to play. All right. Let's play. Ah. It's hard to explain. Back then, I set off from the Zhuanshan Dao sect to defend the Eastern Sea. But as a result, my luck was bad. And I ended up being provoked by a tortoise. I killed it. But who would have thought that this would cause a huge calamity? Brother Wenjin, you might not believe me, but it was that tortoise that attacked me first. But after I killed it, I was filled with regret. 
that tortoise's strongest point was actually its shell. Its shell was extremely hard and capable of summoning an even bigger old tortoise. I was afraid the old tortoise would bite me, so I ran over to the Grand Zaya. Fortunately, the Grand Zaya kept me. Otherwise, it'd be very troublesome to handle all the little tortoises the old tortoise sends after me. Long Chen sighed helplessly, while Han Wenjin's expression sank. Tortoise equals bastard. Chapter 1190 Li Wangji Translator Born to be of course his expression was unnatural. The tortoise Long Chen said he had killed was Hans Henayu. In truth, Hans Henayu hadn't been an imperial prince. He was not even part of the main imperial branch. However, he was still part of the imperial family, and the Grand Han had to stand up for him. That was why Hans Henayu had possessed an identity jade plate of one of the Grand Han's experts. However, it hadn't been able to protect his life. One of the eight princes had been killed. It was a slap in the Grand Han's face. Furthermore, for Long Chen to call them tortoises made Han Wenjin's fury soar, but he didn't express it. Instead, he indifferently said, I've long since heard of your grand name, but it seems your coarse words and actions aren't quite in line with your position. Does the Grand Zaya have no one else? No, you've completely misunderstood. There is no one more suited to this position than me. No one else wanted to do it, so they sent me. See, I'm wearing special armor so I'm not afraid of getting any piss or shit on me. Long Chen patted his armor. Han Wenjin had tried to cut at Long Chen twice, but all he received were slaps in the face. Although he suppressed it very well, his expression wasn't so good. He had originally been wanting to infuriate Long Chen in order to see him fly into a rage. He was a specialist at that, which was why many people in the Grand Zaya would immediately get so incredibly infuriated just upon seeing him while also being helpless to do anything to him. One of those people was Zaya Yanchang. However, Han Wenjin had chosen to target the wrong person. When it came to ridiculing people through sarcasm, Long Chen was definitely on the level of a Grand Master. Since the Grand Zaya sent you to receive me, I trust that you, Long Chen, must be well versed in the four arts of zither, chis, calligraphy, and painting, as well as the usual poetry and singing. Han Wenjin switched his attack point. Han Wenjin's delegation had come under the banner of exchanging culture. They would have exchanges with the Grand Zaya over poetry, singing, as well as the four arts. Of course, an exchange of martial arts was also a part of their duty. That was why those who received the delegations all had to be people of great talent in all these regards. They had to be masters of both pen and sword. Han Wenjin had already heard that Long Chen was someone who came from extremely poor origins who only focused on the martial path. He had been struggling on the bottom levels of the cultivation world and had only managed to suddenly soar to his current heights through chance. He had no cultural learning as a foundation. Therefore, he was now targeting a country bumpkin's fatal weak point. Singing, poetry, the four arts, the three religions, the nine schools, the five faces, the eight trigrams, the changes of the plum blossom, the ancient art of divination. There is nothing that I, Long Chen, do not know, boasted Long Chen. You, stop bragging. How is someone like you supposed to know that much? Han Wenjin was first shocked, but then he quickly realized Long Chen was just duping him and he sneered. Even the thousands of the Grand Zaya's guards were shocked and looked at him with disbelief. That was too exaggerated. Don't try to use your intelligence to judge mine. Just because you haven't seen a kind of person doesn't mean that they don't exist. Let me ask you, your dad. Ah, speaking colloquially to save any misunderstandings. Your father is skilled in chis, correct? Asked Long Chen. Correct. My imperial father rarely finds a worthy adversary in chis, boasted Han Wenjin. Naturally, a generation's emperor had to be skilled in countless arts in order to convey them to their people. Han Wenjin's father was the current Grand Han Emperor, and he was truly talented. You might not believe me, but I met your father a long time ago. I really have to say that your father is truly talented. However, your father, old man Li, He's a bit too stubborn said Long Chen. Hold on, what are you talking about? I am surnamed Han, and my father is the emperor of the Grand Han. How could he be surnamed Li? Interrupted Han Wenjin. Idiot, I just knew your intelligence makes you only fit to be a frog at the bottom of the well. But well, that's good for me. You're surnamed Han, and your father should have the same surname. Sorry, you're right. I've met so many people that I've gotten them mixed up. Long Chen acted embarrassed and apologized. However, it's true that I do know your father. It should have been around 10 years ago. Back then, I was just a youth playing chis at home. 
Your father suddenly appeared and said he wanted to play chess against me. Back then, I had no idea your father was an emperor, so I didn't go easy on him. Well, it goes without saying that your father's chess playing was excellent. However, I wasn't bad either. The two of us fought intensely, neither of us able to get an advantage over each other. The sky turned dim, the earth darkened, the sun and moon lost all their light. The people listening were speechless. It was just chiss. There were only so many pieces. How could it get so exaggerated? Long Chen seemed to be afraid of being interrupted, and he rapidly said, that fierce game of chiss was extremely bitter. Our pieces were slaughtered, and in the end, we each only had one piece left. I had a rook, and he had a bishop. I wanted to declare a draw, but your father refused. Your father bishoped me with his bishop, and as for me, I could only rook your father with my rook. As a result, we ended up in a stalemate. Your father bishoped me, I rooked your father. Your father bishoped me, I am your father. Your father is like me, I am your father. Long Chen was speaking too quickly, and Han Wenjin had heard him say your father is like me, I am your father three times before understanding. Long Chen, you're courting death roared Han Wenjin. Oh, what's going on? Weren't we just talking so nicely? Why would you curse me like this? Long Chen asked with a puzzled expression. You are provoking my grand Han. Killing intent filled Han Wenjin's eyes, and an immense pressure crashed down onto Long Chen. What are you talking about? I was just telling a story, said Long Chen innocently. You, you're clearly provoking me. I'm getting tired of hearing that. Didn't you try insulting me several times just now? How was that not a provocation? Long Chen shook his head and said, Honored Han Wenjin, my grand Zaya is a mannerly nation, but we won't let others be unbridled. I was just telling a story. The person who played chiss against me was Hans Hongsheng. Back then, I had no idea he was such a big figure, and only when I arrived in the Central Plains did I learn he was the Grand Hans Emperor. Back then, I was filled with worship. I simply haven't had a chance to pay my respects to him in person yet. Bastard. Do you know how many people have the same name in this world? How do you know he was my imperial father? Raged Han Wenjin. Long Chen suddenly became enlightened. Ah? So it was just someone with the same name. Looks like it's a misunderstanding. You know, now that I think about it, I could never figure out why a grand emperor would come to play chess with me. Many thanks for clearing up this riddle for me. Long Chen cupped his fists to him gratefully, causing Han Wenjin to almost puke blood. He had once more been conned by Long Chen. Furthermore, he had even been the one to say there were many people with the same name. He had essentially given Long Chen his excuse. Now he couldn't even express his rage. Just as Long Chen was enraging Han Wenjin, in the depths of the distant palace, the Grand Xia's Emperor, Xia Yuyang, was sitting with Xia Yanchong's master, drinking wine. Long Chen really is talented. However, Li Xiangxuan already used this move before, and now you're using it as well. Don't you feel like you're just copying him? Xia Yanchong's master smiled at Xia Yuyang. There are many things that are repeated in scriptures without it growing old. Don't you think that this scene is very delightful? Xia Yuyang didn't mind. They were currently watching a projection of Long Chen wildly gesturing and unleashing flying spittle in order to conceal his your father is like me. I am your father. The two of them were both smiling brightly. They were extremely high and aloof existences and it was their first time seeing this kind of wordplay which commoners would often play with. Han Wenjin had finally learned his lesson. He suppressed his fury and began to act as if he was enjoying the scenery as they traveled down the road. He no longer spoke with Long Chen to avoid being angered. He found that even ten of him were unable to match Long Chen's tongue. Long Chen knew a thousand times the number of tricks he did. The slightest carelessness would cause him to fall into a trap. However, he was still a bit unwilling and he secretly gestured to one of the women beside him. HMPH, to be so coarse. Are you even a man? When did the Grand Zaya's men decline to this state? No wonder the Grand Zaya's women all prefer to marry into my Grand Han. The woman looked at Long Chen as she spoke. You actually sent a woman now? The Grand Han's men are truly scoundrels. Sorry, pretty miss. I need to correct a few things about what you just said. First, I am not a member of the Grand Zaya. I was merely asked to fill this position at the last moment. So what you said has no meaning. Second, you shouldn't say such a thing to a man. What if they said, if you don't believe I'm a man, why don't you come and try it? Just how would you reply to such a thing? Long Chen shrugged a bit helplessly. Although he put it indirectly and tactfully, it wasn't very subtle. The woman immediately turned red. Rogue, this woman was definitely beautiful. 
with curves in all the right places. But compared to someone like Long Chen who had seen his share of peak beauties, she was like a green leaf compared to the flower that was Men Qi. Pretty miss, this also doesn't have any meaning. You're clearly the one who questioned my male equipment and reproductive abilities while I am simply replying. How am I rogue? said Long Chen innocently. At this time, the entourage of the Grand Zaya, despite clearly knowing they shouldn't laugh for fear of losing decorum, were unable to help it. It was unknown how hard it was on them to keep their laughter stifled. Seeing those people want to laugh yet also not daring, that woman's fury soared. Long Chen, if you're a man, you'll accept a challenge from me, Li Wanji. So it's you. Long Chen looked at her with disbelief. You know me? Asked Li Wanji icily. No, I just hear people mention you a lot. No wonder my grand Zaya's emperor and princes like to keep themselves busy. I'm suddenly reminded of a certain phrase. A bashful expression appeared on Long Chen's face. Really Wang Ji. When Long Chen said that, four words appeared in the Grand Zaya's guards' minds. Within the Imperial Palace, two supreme experts in the midst of drinking tea were unable to bear it and both spat out a mouthful of tea. A couple points here. First of all, Long Chen clearly doesn't know how to play chess because even in Chinese chess, you need to have the king alive. So they didn't have one piece left. More importantly, the pun is that the pieces he named sound like him and is like. So I rooked your father sounds like I am your father. And your father bishop me sounds like your father is like me. Your father is like me. I am your father. Ramble. Although an argument could be made that the king doesn't count as one of their pieces because in Chinese chis, the king cannot move out of the imperial palace. A three by three box located on both sides of the board. Honestly there's no need to analyze it. Because technically, the piece that he had wasn't a rook. It was a guard, a piece that only exists in Chinese chis which is also prohibited from moving out of the imperial palace. As for the bishop, also known as an elephant, it cannot cross the river at the center of the map. Furthermore, the spelling was technically off. In Chinese chis, the black and white, normally red, pieces have different characters for them, even though they do the same thing. And Long Chen stated two pieces that belonged to the same side. So he really doesn't know how to play chis as an expression meaning you're very busy. As in you have 10,000 things to do in one day. Her name sounds the same as the last three words. And the first word is slang for fuck. As in have sex with. So it would be fuck Li Wangji. Chapter 1191 Low Grade Pickup Arts Translator. Born to be this scoundrel. He really is brazen. He even dares to tease me. The master of the Grand Zaya. Zaya Yuyang shook his head as he looked at the astonished Long Chen. At this time, Long Chen was covering his mouth with both hands and looking at Li Wangji in exaggerated shock. It was like her name had completely stupefied him. Li Wangji was too refined to even understand what Long Chen was saying. Due to the difference in cultures, she had never even heard that phrase before. In comparison, Han Wenjin, who was deeply familiar with the Grand Zaya's culture, immediately understood. He icily said, Long Chen, you go too far. Hey, has there been some mistake? Did I say something? Please don't take a general comment as a personal attack. Your own thoughts have nothing to do with me, said Long Chen righteously. He hadn't said it explicitly. He had only vaguely implied that expression without even saying it. There was no way for Han Wenjin to do anything to him over it. Killing intent raged in Han Wenjin's eyes. He had lost out more from speaking with Long Chen than he had in his entire life. And he didn't even have the ability to strike back. As a result, the atmosphere grew very strange. The Grand Zaya's guards looked at Long Chen with reverence and worship. They hated the sanctimonious fellows from the Grand Han the most, especially because their words always contained hidden thorns. Seeing Han Wenjin's hidden thorns be easily destroyed by Long Chen and how infuriated he was by just a few words from Long Chen, they felt incredibly refreshed. Long Chen led the way without saying a word. Han Wenjin, Li Wangji, and the hundreds of people accompanying them also didn't say anything. The atmosphere was tense and heavy. As they followed the central path straight forward, quite a few maidens ended up cheering from the sides. Han Wenjin finally smiled. He began to wave at those maidens and smiled warmly, enticing quite a few sharp cries from them. It went without saying that Han Wenjin's position in the hearts of the Grand Zaya's maidens had reached an unprecedented level. Countless maidens worshipped him. Their cheering and cries allowed Han Wenjin to regain his confidence. He constantly waved at them while glancing at Long Chen. A touch of ridicule appeared in Long Chen's eyes. Did this idiot think he was so amazing because he was able to get the adoration of some ignorant maidens who lived in a world of peace and prosperity? 
Any woman that had really seen the world wouldn't give him a second look. He wasn't a man, nor was he a woman. Long Chen didn't even look at Han Wenjin or pay any attention to those almost fanatical maidens. He simply continued onwards. The Grand Xia's maidens are so welcoming and sharp-eyed. They can tell who's the pearl with just a glance. No matter how conspicuous the place the soybean places itself in, it's still just a bean and won't attract others. Li Wangji approached Long Chen and muttered to herself. Although she didn't know what Long Chen's previous words had meant, just from the expressions on Han Wenjin and their guards' faces, she knew they hadn't been nice words. Now seeing that Han Wenjin was so popular, she once more began to target Long Chen, wanting to use Han Wenjin's charisma to suppress him. All these maidens were focused on Han Wenjin. None of them looked at Long Chen. They can tell who the pig is? Well said. Long Chen didn't retort. Instead, he gave her a thumbs up. Li Wangji didn't even understand what he had said. Thinking he was admitting defeat, she became even more confident, lightly saying, compared to the Grand Xia, my Grand Han's men have more flavor. Long Chen nodded. Yes, there's no way for me to argue against that. The Grand Xia's men truly have no smell. On the other hand, the Grand Han's men are covered in the smell of makeup. It's truly a strong smell. You, you're clearly just jealous. Tens of thousands of maidens are cheering for my Prince Wenjin. While you, Long Chen, do you see a single person glancing at you? Sneered Li Wangji. Birds of a feather flock together. Women all like to get closer to themselves, as they find it easier to get along. If this was a crowd of men instead, they'd have long since started fighting over how crowded it was. But look. Your Prince Wenjin is so liked by all these maidens. This is the result of women not liking to fight amongst women. They all like to cheer each other on, said Long Chen lightly. Now, no matter how stupid Li Wangji was, she could still tell Long Chen was ridiculing Han Wenjin for being effeminate and not really a man. The reason why the women liked him so much was that they viewed him as a sister. Long Chen, your mouth really is vicious. You're the one who's not a man, raged Li Wangji. Li Wangji was not actually a part of the Grand Han's imperial family. However, she was a rank 8 celestial, and her position was extremely high in the Grand Han. Her status was almost equivalent to a member of the imperial family. Unable to outtalk Long Chen, she began to launch a personal attack without the slightest finesse. But Long Chen couldn't be bothered to say anything back to her. They continued onward. Following the main road, they quickly reached the imperial city at the center of Grand Xia City. Music began to thrum through the air as entertainers came to greet them in accordance with the etiquette of the Grand Xia. At the entrance into the Imperial City, he saw Xia Yanchang, Xia Yaoluo, and the other members of the Imperial family. Xia Yaoluo was in her best clothes and adornments, looking like a lotus flower breaking out of the water. When she saw Han Wenjin, she turned completely red, filled with excitement and delight. Prince Wenjin has come a long way. Please forgive me for not being able to receive you sooner. The one in charge of receiving them here was not Xia Yanchang, but another prince. Xia Yanchang was focused on the martial path, and he had no heart to control the nation. The third prince Xia Yanfen was currently acting as the crown prince, and so he was the one in charge of receiving them. Crown Prince Yanfeng is too courteous. I came here in a rush, so I was only able to bring a meager gift. Please accept. Other than that, the 17th princess is about to turn 18. Last year. I asked an artisan to create this ornament. Seventeenth princess, please don't laugh at me for this little gift. Han Wenjin took out two cases, one big and one small. The large one was given to Xia Yunfeng. A national gift had to be prepared, and it was usually some kind of local product of the nation. It didn't necessarily have to be very valuable. Xia Yaoluo turned red as she received Han Wenjin's case. Thank you. She lightly rubbed the case, her head low. Xia Yanchang's expression became frosty, a hint of killing intent in his eyes. He knew that Han Wenjin was simply trying to seduce his little sister, and his foolish sister wasn't able to realize the consequences. It was impossible for her to marry Han Wenjin. Han Wenjin was only doing this in order to harm Xia Yaoluo, but as her big brother, Xia Yanchang was helpless to do anything. He wished he could kill this hypocrite Han Wenjin right here and now. To Han Wenjin, whether he succeeded or not, he would only benefit. If he succeeded, he would have pulled over the Grand Xia's princess, who was also a rank 8 celestial. That would be a vicious slap in the Grand Xia's face. If Xia Yaoluo tried to marry him but he was unable to bring her away, she would still be executed, and the Grand Xia would lose a talented expert, as well as lose their face. Right now, 
All Han Wenjin had to do was dote on Xia Yaoluo and completely captivate her heart. The deeper his poison got into her heart, the less she would listen to others. Seeing his sister be drawn deeper into Han Wenjin's trap step by step, Xia Yanchang could practically see his father's butcher blade raised. The hatred in his heart grew even stronger. Please, go ahead and open it. This is a present I meticulously prepared for you. Han Wenjin smiled at Xia Yaoluo. It looked like a very warm smile, but looking at it made Long Chen's hair stand on end, and he got goosebumps. Xia Yaoluo trembled slightly. She seemed extremely moved as she gently opened the case to see a phoenix hairpin. The phoenix hairpin was a shining golden color with interweaving silver. The two colors made the hairpin almost look alive. Even Long Chen had to admit that it was truly beautiful and definitely had immense power over a woman. Thank you, for your gift. I really like it. Many thanks. Xia Yaoluo happily looked at the phoenix hairpin in its case. This phoenix hairpin has a total of 9,999 runes that I personally engraved. It took a long time, said Han Wenjin caringly. Fuck, what trash pickup arts? Are you using them in front of me to disgust me? Isn't this far too low grade? And yet, this low grade tactic ended up working. Seeing Xia Yaoluo smiling so happily, Long Chen didn't know what to say. Hmm. Standing by the door isn't very suitable. Let's enter. If we wait too long, the wine we prepared will get cold, said Long Chen upon seeing Xia Yanchang's killing intent about to explode. As he had wanted, his words immediately broke the romantic atmosphere. Xia Yaoluo glared at Long Chen, but Long Chen was surprised to see that she wasn't actually angry with him. Long Chen is right. The food and drink have already been prepared, and they're just waiting for Prince Wenjin. Xia Yanfeng ended up being the steady one his polite smile never fading. He gestured courteously to Han Wenjin. Han Wenjin bowed slightly in return and walked side by side with Xia Yunfeng. The others all followed behind them. Long Chen was planning on walking with Xia Yunchong and saying a few things to him, but instead he was caught by Xia Yaoluo. What is it? Are you trying to get revenge on me? Let me tell you, I am currently working under the emperor's orders, so don't do anything crazy, warned Long Chen. HMPH. I'm not so petty. Look, do you think this hairpin is pretty? Xia Yaoluo opened the case, flaunting it. It's pretty, but it'll be prettier on you. Long Chen really had to admit that the Grand Han's craftsmanship was not bad. When he returned, he would have to get a pile of them to give one to each of his wives. Then these people would see what was truly called a fairy-like beauty. Long Chen, help me put them on. I want to wear it now, said Xia Yaoluo. Now's not a good time. People will laugh at you for being so impatient. Long Chen shook his head. Who cares? I want to wear it right now. I want to see what it feels like, said Xia Yaoluo. Fine, you're the princess. As soon as you get angry, I get nervous. So I'll help you put it on. Long Chen received the phoenix hairpin and gently inserted it into Xia Yaoluo's high bun. Just at this moment, Han Wenjin, who was smiling and talking with Xia Yunfeng at the front, inadvertently turned back to see this. He saw Xia Yaoluo holding Long Chen, while Long Chen helplessly put the phoenix hairpin on her. His expression changed, and killing intent appeared in his eyes. On the other hand, Xia Yunfeng and Yanchang both smiled, a trace of hope appearing in their hearts. Pearl and pig sound similar in Chinese flavor and smell are the same term in Chinese. Chapter 1192 Agreement of Ten Exchanges Translator Born to be Long Chen Do I look pretty with the phoenix hairpin? Xia Yaoluo turned her head back and forth slowly. She looked at Long Chen expectantly. Even if you didn't wear them, you'd still be very beautiful. Long Chen smiled. Xia Yaoluo truly was very beautiful. Although she couldn't compare to Menki or Tang Wanur, she was definitely a figure capable of bringing about the downfall of a nation. Furthermore, she possessed an innate air of nobility which made her even more attractive. He, I'm happy you're learning how to talk properly. Xia Yaoluo smiled excitedly giving Long Chen some rare praise. Are you saying I didn't know how to talk properly before? Demanded Long Chen. He, for some unknown reason, I'm happiest when I'm with you. Xia Yaoluo smiled. Oh, were you not happy just now? Asked Long Chen. Xia Yaoluo turned red. Looking at Han Wenjin's back, she whispered, I used to really like him. Sometimes I even dreamed about him. So I was happy to see him and extremely excited to receive a gift from him. However, I don't know why, but I feel a kind of pressure at the same time that makes my heart uneasy. I think I'm afraid. Afraid of what? Asked Long Chen curiously. I'm not sure. 
but while being with him does make me very excited. It also gives me a feeling of unease. But being with you, although I'm not happy or excited, I feel very peaceful. It's a very warm kind of feeling. Xia Yaoluo looked at Long Chen with a smile. Long Chen raged. TCH. Do you know how to talk properly? Being with me doesn't make you happy or excited? Then what are you doing entangling me? HMPH. I'm mad now. If you're so unhappy, then hand over the wine I gave you. Xia Yaoluo smiled at Long Chen who feigned anger. Today, she had finally seen the Han Wenjin she had been thinking about day and night. But now that she did, she felt a strange feeling. She had always greatly adored Han Wenjin. Her room was even filled with portraits of him. She was infatuated with the romantic stories that came from the Grand Han. And she also longed to have a warm, intimate man looking after her. As the princess of the Grand Xia, she didn't have many close relationships. Her father and mother were all busy with politics, while her brothers and sisters were focused on cultivation and studying the ways to rule a nation. The only one who she could count on to spend time with her was her brother Xia Yunchong. But a big brother's love was not enough for a young maiden in the springtime of her youth. The first time she saw that grand, handsome, and tender Han Wenjin, she had been left with a deep impression and unable to extricate herself from it. Then she had become engrossed with the romantic stories that circulated out of the Grand Han. She had longed even more for those kinds of intense romantic feelings. But Long Chen's arrival had unconsciously changed her thoughts. Long Chen was incomparably domineering and didn't pamper her at all. He would scold her, curse her, and make her cry several times out of anger. And yet he also treated her especially well sometimes. He had been willing to split half of that incredibly precious wine with her, making her exceptionally grateful. Furthermore, he was like a deep well. He didn't look very conspicuous on the outside, and yet no one could tell how deep he was. As someone who dared to swindle the wine god palace's people of their wine, he had to have huge gods. The more she was with Long Chen, the less she understood him. He was like a riddle that made her want to solve him. He was sometimes domineering, sometimes amiable, sometimes petty, sometimes magnanimous. Sometimes a sentence from him would make her laugh and sometimes it would make her cry. Originally, Xia Yaoluo hadn't really felt this, but now that she saw Han Wenjin, when she compared the two, she felt the feeling of danger and mystery around Long Chen was much more attractive, making Han Wenjin's charisma seem much weaker. Furthermore, being with Long Chen made her feel peaceful, as if whatever happened, he would be able to handle it easily. Now that Long Chen looked like a child demanding his toy back with his fake anger and his extended hand, she felt it to be extremely funny. Nice try. The things that enter my hands are mine forever. You should give up on that thought, said Xia Yaoluo. Just at this time, they entered the inner gate of the imperial city, and there was a red carpet in front of them leading to a grand palace. This palace was used by the grand Xia to welcome and entertain guests. It was extremely spacious, and once they were inside, they had to go through all kinds of special etiquettes and sequences before they were able to take a seat. This was no ordinary family feast. The tables were low to the ground tables that could only be seated by two people on each side. Long Chen wasn't a prince, so he had no qualifications to sit at the top. He found a table for himself that was near the edge. He had only just sat down when a burst of fragrance blew over. Xia Yaoluo had actually also come. Girl, are you drunk? Your spot's up there. Long Chen pointed to the main spots at the front. The banquet hall was split into two parts one for the main characters and one for the minor characters. Naturally, the first part was meant for the princes and princesses. For Xia Yaoluo to come here was unsuitable to her status. You're the one who is drunk. Sitting up there is so constricting. Just the toasting, blessings, salutations, and return etiquettes are enough to exhaust someone to death. I don't want to go through that. So move over a bit. Why is your butt so big? Are you trying to take up two seats on your own? Xia Yaoluo forced Long Chen to scooch over. Aren't you afraid of your imperial father scolding you for this? Asked Long Chen as he moved over. You think that's possible? He won't even make an appearance in such a banquet, said Xia Yaoluo. At this time, everyone had found seats for themselves. Seeing Xia Yaoluo take the initiative to sit beside Long Chen made Xia Yunchong and Xia Yunfeng smile at each other. On the other hand, Han Wenjin's expression was now a bit unnatural. He could have accepted Xia Yaoluo sitting anywhere except beside Long Chen. Furthermore, she was quietly whispering to him in a questionably intimate manner. But he also couldn't express anything over this. He was sitting beside Li Wangji, 
and he raised his cup. This first glass of wine is to bless the citizens of the Grand Zaya, to wish the Emperor good health, and to the long friendship of the Grand Zaya and Grand Han. My Imperial Father was working hard all day. He's extremely busy and simply does not have the time to greet you personally. Please forgive him for this, but I will represent my Imperial Father to raise this cup to you. Zaya Yunfeng smiled and raised his cup. After he said this, everyone felt the atmosphere change a bit. Li Wangji's expression darkened, as she finally realized why everyone's expressions had grown odd after Long Chen had said that back then. Long Chen, I challenge you to a battle. If you're a man, you'll accept. Li Wangji glared at Long Chen, looking like she wanted to bite him to death. What was going on? Xia Yanchang, Xia Yaoluo, and the other princes and princesses were all startled. They had no idea what was happening because they didn't know about what had happened before. Brother Wenjin, this, as the master of this banquet, Xia Yunfen was the one to ask what was happening. Um, Long Chen and my friend argued a bit before. Her name is, Li Wangji. Han Wenjin also didn't quite know how to explain it, so he did it very vaguely. Hearing her name, Xia Yunfen and Xia Yunchang both realized what was going on, but the others still didn't quite understand. This matter was my mistake. I did not know Miss Wangji's name. I apologize. Xia Yunfeng magnanimously took the blame. But in reality, he was speechless inside. Who had come up with this name? Was it to intentionally cause trouble with his grand Xia? Crown Prince, this matter has nothing to do with you. It is Long Chen who went too far. Moreover, it just so happens that it's a tradition to have a martial competition before a feast. I simply wonder whether Long Chen will agree to exchange some pointers with Li Wangji or not said Han Wenjin. To have a martial competition before the feast was in reality a friendly exchange of pointers to see who was stronger. The four ancient nations had truly done such things in the past, but in the past few years, such martial competitions had grown rarer, and they were replaced with different events. Furthermore, a competition on this level was extremely rare. Li Wangji was a rank 8 celestial, while Long Chen's power was also explosive. Once they fought, it probably wouldn't be so simple as exchanging pointers, especially considering Li Wangji's current expression. This isn't really appropriate. It could harm our friendship. Xia Yunfeng shook his head. It's just a way to liven things up. Both sides are aggrieved. So why not have a little fight? However, 10 exchanges is the limit. If a victor is not determined by then, it'll count as a draw. Han Wenjin smiled. In truth, Long Chen is also a guest of my grand Xia and I cannot decide this for him. Xia Yunfeng shook his head. Long Chen, if you're a man, you'll get up and fight me. Don't cower like a turtle in its shell. Li Wangji stood up and pointed at Long Chen. This person goes too far. How can she point at others like this? Long Chen, go put her away. Now, even Xia Yaoluo found this unacceptable. Although she was willful, she knew she couldn't point at others when speaking at them. That was an insult. So she encouraged Long Chen to fight. Right now, everyone was looking at Long Chen. Long Chen lazily stood up and stretched. Looking at Li Wangji, he said, Why bother? From the start, I never said anything that went overboard toward you. Is it worth it for you to persistently force me until I have no choice but to fight you? Intentionally angering me won't bring you any benefits. HMPH, there's no need to say so much. You disgust me, and I have to properly teach you a lesson today, sneered Li Wangji. You have to teach everyone who disgusts you a lesson? Do you like being disgusted? Since you want to fight, then I'll accompany you. However, when you embarrass yourself, don't cry. Long Chen slowly stood up. You're the one who will be crying. Li Wangji smiled coldly upon seeing Long Chen agree to her challenge. Don't try to kill him. Just make him lose face. You can't kill people here. Han Wenjin sent Li Wangji a secret transmission. Understood. I won't kill him. I'll make sure to only cut off a single arm, replied Li Wangji, a ruthless gleam in her eyes. Since both parties consent, let's start. Don't do anything that would harm our friendship, said Xia Yunfeng. Two balls of light appeared in the palace hall, enveloping the two of them. They suddenly appeared on an ancient martial stage. He uses the same expression used a few chapters ago, Re Li Wangji, which sounds the same as have sex with Li Wangji. Chapter 1193 Berserk Energy Translator Born to be space trembled as Long Chen and Li Wangji appeared on top of an ancient martial stage. The surroundings of the martial stage were filled with mist so that the two of them couldn't see anything outside the stage. But from the palace hall where Xia Yaoluo and the others were, they could see them clearly. 
There was a projection at the center of the hall showing the martial stage. It was an incredibly clear projection that made it feel like it was the real thing. Even the pressure coming from the two of them could be sensed clearly. Everyone stopped breathing. Every person here was an expert in their own rights, and they all liked to see other experts exchanging blows in order to confirm their own strength. Long Chen, I'll make you pay a price for your words. Li Wangji icily looked at Long Chen, her aura gradually condensing. Runes erupted into existence behind her. Her manifestation appeared, causing immense pressure to crash down on Long Chen. This formless energy was like an invisible hand tightly gripping Long Chen. It was Li Wangji's aura lock. Sensing how easily she had locked him down, she sneered. Looks like I overestimated you. I can beat you in just one move. Her sword came flying out of the scabbard, and people were unable to see how she even unsheathed it. All they saw was a fierce and sharp ray of light shooting toward Long Chen. Sparks flew. Long Chen hadn't released any of his aura. There was a blood red saber in front of him, blocking Li Wangji's sword. That incredibly powerful attack from Li Wangji was easily blocked by Long Chen causing everyone to jump in shock. He blocked it with just his physical strength. Xia Yanchong was filled with shock. Although he had given Long Chen a high estimate on his strength, he still hadn't thought Long Chen was this powerful. Even without using his spiritual Yuan, he easily blocked this attack. Furthermore, he didn't even budge. It was like all Li Wangji's force was no greater than a dragonfly trying to shake a tree. Her attack wasn't even qualified to shake him. Long Chen's expression was calm like a rippleless well. He raised his saber, looking at Li Wangji coldly. In truth, he wasn't calm inside. That was because after reaching the fourth heaven stage of foundation forging, his strength was no longer perfectly under his control. He had grown stronger without even sensing it, because the strengthening of his physical body couldn't match the potency of his 108,000 immortal platforms. He couldn't sense the exact power of his physical body. But today, now that he was fighting, he sensed that the power of his physical body had unconsciously risen. Take another attack from me. Li Wangji leaped into the air, hacking her sword down. This time sword light exploded and the void was torn apart. Boom. Li Wangji's attack shook the martial stage, and a key wave erupted, causing all the disciples in the palace hall to jump and hastily raise their hands to block it. But they quickly laughed involuntarily. What they were seeing was simply a projection of another space. It looked realistic but none of their power could reach them, let alone menace them. When the key wave scattered, they were once more shocked. The expressions of the experts from the Grand Han all changed. At this time, Long Chen was standing there, still with his emotionless expression. The angle of his saber hadn't shifted at all. Bloodrinker was blocking Li Wangji's sword. How? How is this possible? The Grand Han's experts were filled with shock. Long Chen still hadn't released his aura. He was just using his physical strength. Li Wangji was an extremely powerful expert within the Grand Han. She was the strongest junior genius besides the three monarchs. With a cultivation base at the 8th heaven stage of foundation forging, as an innate rank 8 celestial, she possessed incredible power. The Grand Han placed a great deal of importance on raising her. But now, she didn't even have the qualifications to shake Long Chen. How could they not be shocked? So he really was powerful. You just couldn't tell from his appearance. Xia Yaoluo's heart was shaken as she watched. Her spiritual perception had sensed that Long Chen was an extremely terrifying existence. It had told her that he had immense power that he hadn't revealed yet. But then after her first encounter with him, he had been nothing more than a laughing scoundrel without the slightest propriety. He didn't have the slightest air of an expert. Then in the wine god palace, he had acted like a complete swindler. After taking their wine, that petty, pleased smile of his had made Xia Yaoluo forget he was a terrifying expert. Now Li Wangji had attacked him twice, but Long Chen was like an immovable mountain. The current Long Chen seemed like a different person compared to his normally laughing self. Although he had yet to even attack, that domineering air in his bones was already starting to manifest. Normally, he was like a friendly neighbor, amiable and approachable, giving people a harmless feeling. But once he started fighting, he instantly became an explosive battle god, looking disdainfully down on all. This instantaneous change in styles gave people an intense visual image. It also made their spirits shake. Faint energy was coiling around Long Chen, causing the space around him to look like water that was slowly heating up. The fluctuations grew stronger and stronger. Long Chen ignored the furious Li Wangji. Right now, he was sensing the changes in his body. Under the pressure Li Wangji was emitting, 
his 108,000 immortal platforms were automatically circulating, almost like self-protection. Their energy was pouring through him. This energy was not the energy in his four key C's, but the core energy of his immortal platforms. Long Chen was finally experiencing the huge changes in his body after he had advanced to the fourth heaven stage of foundation forging. Just the power of his physical body made him twice as powerful as he had been at the third heaven stage. The reason he was unable to sense the changes in his physical strength was because the power of his immortal platforms had risen to over ten times greater than when he had been at the third heaven stage. The disproportionate growth caused him to not feel like his physical body was strengthening. The growth of his physical body was unable to keep up with the requirements of the nine-star hegemon body art. But even though it was unable to keep up with his immortal platforms, his physical strength was still incredible now. Arrogant bastard. You're looking down on me? Die. The runes behind her suddenly became berserk, and a boundless force crashed down on Long Chen. Li Wangji's expression was extremely unsightly. Her goal was to humiliate Long Chen and force him to use his trump cards. But even after two attacks, Long Chen hadn't moved. It was like he was playing with a child. How was she supposed to accept this? She began to truly use the power of her cultivation base. Divine Ring. A four-colored divine ring appeared behind Long Chen, unleashing divine might. The world changed color, and in that instant, everyone in the palace hall was filled with awe. It was sacred, powerful, and imposing. In front of this divine ring, they all felt as minuscule as ants. Even Xia Yaoluo and Xia Yanchang, who had already seen Long Chen fight, were filled with shock. The power Long Chen had displayed so far was many times greater than when he had fought back then. As expected, this fellow was hiding his strength. Xia Yaoluo involuntarily clenched her fists, her eyes full of excitement. Although Long Chen normally seemed like a sloppy scoundrel, under his divine ring, he now seemed possessed by a battle god making her feel a sense of worship. Four-star battle armor. Boom. Suddenly, heaven and earth's energy seemed to boil. It was like lava exploding, like an ocean was spurting into the air out of Long Chen's feet. Li Wangji was blown back just by this power, an unhealthy redness appearing on her face. Even without Long Chen attacking her, she was injured. Key waves were constantly soaring out of Long Chen, crashing against heaven and earth, causing the world to shake. Right now, Long Chen wasn't holding back. He had unleashed the power of his immortal platforms, and there almost seemed to be an invisible flame burning around Long Chen, causing the space around him to twist and making his figure indistinct. Heavens, what kind of monster is he? Even the Grand Xia's experts were awed. They had never seen such a domineering yet berserk energy. Just this aura of his could threaten the lives of ordinary foundation forging experts. They might be directly killed just by approaching. Han Wenjin's expression changed slightly. He hadn't expected Long Chen to be so strong. Although he had heard that Long Chen had killed several soul transformation experts in the Eastern Sea, that was because he had devoured a self-destructive medicinal pill. Furthermore, he had only killed a few of the heaven-suppressing magic sects experts in a messy battle. That wasn't something to be curious about, because the heaven-suppressing magic sects experts all had weak physical bodies. But the power Long Chen was displaying now shocked him, let alone him. Even Long Chen himself was shocked. At this time, he felt bursts of pain all over his body as the energy of his immortal platforms charged through his meridians, making it feel like they would explode. Now he was finally experiencing the drawbacks of having his physical body not keep up with the growth of the nine-star hegemon body art. Boom. Li Wangji was appalled. Putting away her disdain, she slashed her sword at Long Chen. Long Chen's saber danced. No matter what angle Li Wangji tried to attack from, no matter what move she used, she was blocked by his saber. Consecutive explosive sounds rang out. No matter how marvelous Li Wangji's attack was, she would be forced back by a slash of Long Chen's saber. Long Chen's feet never moved a step. Boom. Long Chen once more slashed his saber, feeling like his body was turning numb. That wasn't due to his opponent, but because his body was unable to endure his own power. It's been 10 exchanges already. There's no need to continue fighting. Forcing back Li Wangji, Long Chen rested Blood Drinker on his shoulder lazily. Did they think they could test his true power? They could keep dreaming. Bastard. Taste another one of my attacks. Roared Li Wangji suddenly. Her face twisted. Blood Key exploded out of her, and her sword unleashed radiant light as it slashed toward him. Chapter 1194 One move to defeat Chiring his opponent translator. Born to be she activated her spirit blood. Startled cries rang out from within the palace hall. 
Activating the spirit blood was the trump card of a celestial, signifying they were going all out. This was no longer an exchange of pointers. Xia Yunfeng's expression sank. This woman from the Grand Han was like an unreasonable shrew. He could see that Li Wangji had no assurance of killing Long Chen and was simply trying to force him into revealing his true power. Because Long Chen was not a celestial, it was harder to guess his trump cards. Thus, being able to force one out would reduce his threat. Xia Yunfeng didn't want to see that, so he took out a jade plate. Just as he was about to use it to force the two of them apart, he received a secret transmission that made him put it away. Having activated her spirit blood, Li Wangji's power soared. Sword light gathered around her as she launched an incredibly sharp attack. Since you want to die, I'll help you out. Long Chen snorted and suddenly shot toward Li Wangji just as her sword was slashing down. Boom. PFFT. The sound of a body being cut apart rang out. When the blinding light in the air faded, they saw Long Chen standing in the air. His saber died in blood. From the air, a head and a headless body slowly fell. Courting death, roared Han Wenjin. Seeing Li Wangji's head had been cut off, his killing intent exploded. The others were all filled with shock. They hadn't been able to see what had just happened. Just how had Li Wangji's head been cut off? Runes appeared in the air, connecting Li Wangji's head with her body, allowing everyone to breathe with relief. Long Chen had only cut Li Wangji's head off as a warning. He hadn't destroyed her soul, sparing her life. In that kind of situation, as long as Long Chen had added his spiritual strength into his attack, then with the power contained in the saber, he would have instantly killed Li Wangji. Everyone was shocked. In the ten exchanges, Long Chen had only defended. But when he had wanted to, he had taken off Li Wangji's head. This scene was too shocking. So shocking that no one knew what to say. Xia Yaoluo's hands were gripping her chest. It felt like her heart would jump out. That last attack of Long Chen's had caused light and runes to fill the air. Making it so no one could see what had happened Noveloon.com at the same time. She thought of when she had been quarreling with Long Chen and just about to raise her sword against him. At that time, Long Chen had said that he could kill her within three moves. She had been intimidated at the time, but then she still hadn't believed it afterward. Now though, seeing this, she knew that as long as he had willed it, there would no longer be a Li Wangji in this world. Xia Yaoluo turned a bit pale as she thought of that, but then she involuntarily smiled. How could Long Chen possibly kill her? Two figures reappeared in the palace hall. They were Long Chen and Li Wangji. Long Chen sat back down in his spot as if nothing had happened, but Li Wangji was pale white and there was still blood around her neck. Her previous waist-length hair now only reached her ears. Death Key was lingering around her forehead. That was because although Long Chen had shown mercy, the power contained within his saber had still harmed her soul. Having your head cut off was like going through a false death. This injury to her soul would take a long time to recover. Having just had a brush with death, Li Wangji was filled with terror. Just standing there, she quivered, not daring to look at Long Chen. Someone. Come help Miss Li Wangji change her clothes. Xia Yunfen waved his hands, and two maids came over and led her away. Li Wangji's body also had blood stains, which wasn't very suitable for this banquet. Rather than saying they were helping her change clothes, it was more accurate to say they were giving her some time to calm down. After all, not everyone was capable of being indifferent to life and death. It was the people who viewed other people's lives to be like stalks of grass that cherished their own lives the greatest. Long Chen. How did you do that final move? Xia Yaoluo poured Long Chen a cup of wine, fawning over him to hear this. She hadn't been able to see how he had won. In fact, no one in the palace hall had been able to see it clearly. In truth, when Long Chen had attacked at that final moment, he had used flame and lightning runes to block other people's sight. He had used the arm bracer to block Li Wangji's sword while using his saber to cut her head off. However, Li Wangji's move truly had been powerful. Long Chen had also paid a price. The arm he had used to block her had been turned to pulp. But Long Chen had instantly healed it, making it so no one could see it. And the reason he had been injured was not truly because of Li Wangji's power. It was because his physical body was unable to perfectly match the power of his immortal platforms, making it difficult for him to control. Hand back my wine and I'll tell you. Long Chen refused to say. The arm bracer and boots were his secret weapons. He couldn't expose them to anyone because they might save his life one day. HMPH. Keep dreaming. If you don't want to tell me, then fine. Who cares? Xia Yaoluo wouldn't fall for such a thing. She felt that Long Chen had simply used some kind of secret move. She wasn't enemies with Long Chen. 
So exchanging all that good wine for this secret was definitely not worth it. At this time, the expressions of the people from the Grand Han were a bit unsightly. This slap in their face had been too vicious. Cutting off a person's head was the greatest humiliation. Long Chen, let me raise a cup for you. To defeat Chiringa woman and even cut off her head. You truly are a hero. At this time, one of the Grand Han's experts mockingly raised his cup to Long Chen. Xia Yaoluo's expression changed. This person was tasteless. After losing, he launched a personal attack. She was just about to speak when Long Chen held her back. As a princess, she shouldn't furiously shout at somebody or it would be lacking decorum. Long Chen indifferently said, First, you don't have the qualifications to toast to me, so you should sit. Second, the cultivation world doesn't differentiate between men or women. The only thing that matters is whether you're weak or strong. Just hearing your tone, it's clear you're an idiot who has lived a far too peaceful life. You clearly don't know the cruelty of the battlefield, or you wouldn't say such a brainless thing. Third, so what if she's a woman? Are you looking down on women? Is your mother not a woman? Is your grandmother not a woman? Your discrimination makes you forget your roots. A sheep kneels in thanks to its mother. A bird repays its mother in its old age. Even a beast knows how to be thankful to their mother. While you are less than a beast, you think you're fit to toast to me? Absolutely shameless. Long Chen's words made the Grand Xia's experts want to cheer. This retort was marvelous, with the first and final points even connecting. In truth, Grand Han's romantic stories did not really represent the Grand Han. Their discrimination toward the young and female was extremely great. Amongst the commoners, women didn't even have the right to sit at the table when eating. They had to sit by the kitchen while doing so. Those romantic stories were games played by the aristocrats. As for the expert who had offered a toast to Long Chen, his background was only ordinary, and his discrimination was deep-rooted. But his insult that Long Chen bullied women ended up being turned back on him until he felt himself to be less than a beast. In truth, this fellow simply didn't know how terrifying women could be. But as for Long Chen, from the eastern wasteland to the central plains, he had encountered countless powerful women. Len Yuian was the strongest of them all. If this person had dared to say that he looked down on women in front of Len Yuian, it would be impressive if he could keep a single bone to bury. Thinking of Len Yuian, Long Chen was put in a strange mood. He didn't know whether this woman, who was both so beautiful and so vicious that she could take a person's life, was still alive. How was there no news about her at all? Even Long Chen was a bit afraid to see Len Yuian, but he also wanted to see her a bit. The woman was too vicious, and too stimulating. You. Just as Long Chen was thinking of Len Yuian, that person from the Grand Han was pointing at Long Chen, not knowing what to say. The stories say that your Grand Han's men are all refined and elegant, quiet men who do things meticulously and carefully. But did your parents never teach you that when eating, you should only stand when making a toast? If you're not, you should be seated. Also, you're never supposed to point at people when speaking to them, because it's very rude. Don't tell me those stories your Grand Han likes to tell are just for others to hear while you really act in a completely different way. Long Chen shook his head. You, you bully. That person put away his hand. But even after a long time, he was unable to come up with anything. The Grand Xia's people almost laughed. Xia Yanchong looked at Long Chen with a faint smile as he crossed verbal swords with the Grand Han's people. He prostrated himself in admiration toward Long Chen for his skill in this regard. Are you even a man? If you are. You should be magnanimous. Don't your stories say that your Grand Han's men are all modest gentlemen who don't like fighting with words? Your current appearance doesn't live up to that. Furthermore, aren't the Grand Han's men supposed to be brave warriors willing to sacrifice themselves to defend the honor and dignity of the commoners? If you were a gentleman, you should have simply smiled slightly and not quibbled. If you were a brave warrior, you should have challenged me to a life and death battle to protect your honor. But you're unable to remain calm and you're a coward. In the end, you're jumping up and down like a monkey. What are you doing? Are you waiting for people to toss you a few coins? Sneered Long Chen. All right, that's enough. Long Chen, these are guests. So don't go too hard on them. Xia Yunfeng finally interrupted. If this continued, the atmosphere would grow too tense. However, although his words seemed like he was advising Long Chen, his words also subtly told the Grand Han's side not to be unreasonable. He was truly worthy of being the crown prince. Han Wenjin was infuriated, but he was unable to get a word in edgewise. Rashly butting in would hurt his face once more. Fortunately, Xia Yunfeng knew how to control things, suppressing the tension. 
he clapped his hands, and over ten beautiful dancers appeared. Ancient, beautiful music filled the air. Chapter 1195 Melodramatic Translator Born to be the music and dancing marked the true beginning of the banquet. All kinds of delicacies were brought up, and fine wine filled their cups. However, although this wine was also excellent and made by the wine god palace's disciples, it was just ordinary wine to them. It didn't contain any realm within it. To Long Chen, Xia Yanchang, and Xia Yaoluo who had drunk those disciples' best wines, it tasted more like water. But the Grand Han's people were immediately filled with praise as they drank it. At this time, Li Wangji returned, much calmer than before, but she still didn't dare to look at Long Chen. The Wine God Palace offered some of their wine for the Grand Xia's national events to entertain guests, but this wine could not be sold or bought, it could only be gifted, but there was no way the Grand Xia would gift the Grand Han any of this wine. Considering their tense relationship, just giving them some to drink right now was not bad. That was why the Grand Han's people found it almost impossible to taste the Wine God Palace's wine. The majority of these people were tasting it for the first time. Now, they were doing their best to fill their stomachs with as much of it as possible, as if drinking just a little bit more was benefiting them. Long Chen even saw someone stealthily put a half-full jug of wine into their spatial ring. However, just a bit later, one of the attendants who came to fill up their wine saw that one of the jugs was missing. According to the rules, they had to replace the old jug with a new jug. All the jugs were counted. The Wine God Palace's wine jugs were special. They could be considered similar to medicinal cauldrons. The longer they were used, the more effective their sealing effect grew and the more precious they became. So the Wine God Palace had to take back their wine jugs. The two maidens were holding new wine jugs. They looked at the two men of the Grand Han. For a moment, they didn't know what to say. Without the wine jugs, they couldn't give them new wine. What are you looking at? Someone already took away our wine jugs just now. Hurry up and pour us the new wine. The man who had stolen the wine also felt something was off, and his embarrassment became anger as he shouted. He didn't know that while he could drink this wine, he couldn't take the wine jugs. They were even more precious than the wine, and losing one or breaking one was a huge crime. The two attendants' expressions became unsightly. They didn't know what to say and just lowered their heads, not saying anything. They didn't leave, but they also didn't put down the wine jugs in their hands. What do you think you're doing? Are you saying I stole your wine? Raged that man. Brother, you misunderstand. They don't want your wine. They want that wine jug. If they're missing a wine jug, they'll at least be kicked out of the imperial city. A heavy punishment would be imprisonment. You can keep the wine you took, but you should hand over the wine jug. Do you have to make things hard on these two palace maidens? Said Long Chen, unable to keep watching. What nonsense. Aren't you still saying that I stole the wine? Raged that person. He had decided to refuse to admit it no matter what, because there was no way for him to admit to it. If he did, it would be too embarrassing. Yaluo, now you see, the real Grand Han's men aren't refined gentlemen. After taking things, they refuse to even admit to it. Now they want two pitiable palace maidens to take the blame for it. I trust that even a child of the Grand Xia wouldn't do such a shameless thing. Long Chen looked at Xia Yaoluo helplessly. Xia Yaoluo looked from this man to Han Wenjin. A distant expression appeared in her eyes. It seemed her beautiful dreams about the Grand Han's arrival this time had been shattered. Hu Bacheng, shut your mouth. Hand it over, or I'll immediately kill you, ordered Han Wenjin, his expression dark. That Hu Bacheng fellow immediately turned listless. He could only take out the wine jug from his spatial ring. I'm sorry everyone. This wine is just too good and I wanted to leave some behind for my father. My apologies, said Pu Bacheng extremely ashamedly. This game again. Who do you think you're fooling with such a thing? What a grand excuse to mask your own selfish desires. But seeing Xia Yaoluo's anger fade, Long Chen knew that this foolish girl had fallen for it. Leave. From now on, you're no longer a member of my Grand Han, said Han Wenjin coldly. Grand Prince, please give me a chance. Pu Bacheng turned pale, his voice trembling. Hu Bacheng was simply doing his filial piety. It can count as forgivable. Prince Wenjin, you should be lenient, said Xia Yunfeng. As the host, he should do something as his guest be to nobody. Otherwise, he wouldn't appear magnanimous enough. HMPH, shouldn't you thank the crown prince? Snorted Han Wenjin to Hu Bacheng. Hu Bacheng immediately kowtowed and said a thousand thanks to Xia Yunfeng. Just like that, his offense of trying to steal the wine was excused. 
and he even received a name for being devoted to his father. Long Chen grumbled inside over how ridiculous that was. After this, the atmosphere once more grew a bit awkward. The banquet ended in that awkward atmosphere, and everyone moved on to the Grand Zaya's Heavenly Cloud Platform. This Heavenly Cloud Platform was also called the Star Peering Platform. Not only was it the tallest building in the Grand Zaya, but it also possessed great historical significance. It was a soaring tower that pierced the clouds. From the top, it was possible to overlook the scenery of the Grand Zaya. It was the best observation tower in the Grand Zaya. It was also a grand place for cultural exchange. There was a huge stage at the front. Long Chen and the others sat down, and the dancers began to put on a beautiful show. Once this grand dance was finished, the true cultural exchange between the two nations began. Beautiful women from the Grand Han also went onto the stage and danced. Then they showed all kinds of different talents and skills. Once one side was done, the other side started. This was Long Chen's first time seeing such a display. Very quickly, the Grand Han began to show their opera skills. An intense and passionate melodramatic love story unfolded on the stage. Within the story, the male lead was a rich young prince, while the female lead was a lowly farmer girl. A coincidental meeting caused the sparks of love to fly between the two of them without any reason. The sparks grew brighter until it was blinding. In the end, due to the difference in status, the male lead encountered all kinds of obstructions and pressures. Just at that moment, a woman even more beautiful than the female lead appeared. One who was even more talented and did her best to pursue the male lead. But the male lead only liked the farmer girl, and he went all out to bring her into his circle. Then all kinds of bad people appeared in his circle and targeted the farmer girl. Another grand prince also appeared by the farmer girl's side. One who also liked her. The farmer girl had to go through all kinds of contrived melodrama in order to end up with the male lead. To sum it up, there were always some unsolvable misunderstandings between the male and female leads. Whenever they were about to get past their problems, they would be interrupted. The bad people were always smart, while the good people were always kind and foolish. The bad people were constantly causing trouble for the good people. But the miraculous thing was, the good people still managed to end up together, while the bad people either ended up reformed or shooting themselves in the foot, killing themselves. In order to study the Grand Han's culture, Long Chen watched seriously. In the end, the male lead and female lead finally ended up together. And the male lead said, after thousands of bumps, after all these twists and turns, I finally reached today. Hearing this, Long Chen almost shit himself. Fuck, you were clearly the stupid one who jumped into the obvious traps over and over again. You couldn't tell between the good and bad people, and you simply repeatedly trusted the bad people, harming the good people. This kind of brainless and contrived plot could only pique the interest of those children who lived a far too peaceful life. If such characters were placed in the merciless struggle of the cultivation world, Long Chen swore he would change his name if they could live to adulthood. What made Long Chen speechless was that Xia Yaoluo was constantly wiping away tears, clearly completely enthralled in it. He had an urge to slap her. Had she gone completely brainless to believe such a melodramatic story? He saw several other princesses quietly sobbing as well. He supposed the Grand Han's ability in this regard did impress him. Looking at the men from the Grand Xia, he saw quite a few of them with tears in their eyes as well. But that wasn't from being moved, but from yawning. They were bored. This kind of plot made them incredibly sleepy. Long Chen, what's with that expression? Don't you feel like it was very moving? It was so difficult for them to get past all those setbacks and enticements. But they still unwaveringly trusted each other. This trust makes the perfect love. Rebuked Xia Yaoluo upon seeing Long Chen's disproving expression. Love shouldn't be an intense oath. In truth, it is as simple as quiet companionship. Perhaps that's different from your ideal dreams. But you should try comparing reality to dreams. True love should be simple. Both sides guard over each other. Occasionally fighting and bickering. They are all parts of love. Long Chen shook his head. The only kinds of people who loved such melodramatic things were people who had gotten used to peaceful lives and wanted stimulation. As for Long Chen, he was the opposite. He was normally so stimulated that he was on the verge of dying. So stimulated that it drove him crazy. He longed for a peaceful life. He wished he could go live in the secluded mountains with his lovers without worrying about anything. But people like Xia Yaoluo who lived peaceful lives felt their lives to be boring. And they wished for a romantic yet also thrilling love. But in this world, being able to escape from peril every single time like that only existed in stories. She would never realize the price for true stimulation. It was a case of someone ignorant not knowing fear. 
HMPH, you're too old to talk to. Unable to reach a consensus with Long Chen, Xia Yaoluo left him and ran over to chatter with the other princesses. After this play was over, the cultural exchange continued. One of those was Chis. Seeing the Chis pieces, Long Chen's expression became odd. He also sensed Han Wenjin glaring at him, his eyes as sharp as blades. He was still engrossed with the your father is like me, I am your father story. Long Chen ignored him. If he came over, he wouldn't mind telling an even more marvelous story. The Grand Xia and Grand Han's people displayed their singing and poetry, their skills in Go and Chis, their scholarly knowledge, etc. Long Chen was watching with interest, as this kind of cultural inheritance was enthralling. When he encountered a marvelous experience, he would also clap along. Some people from the Grand Han began to challenge Long Chen. Other than Chis, they challenged him to an exchange of pointers, but Long Chen ignored them. The main thing was that Long Chen had no skill in those things, and he wouldn't give them a chance to slap his face. I have some insignificant skill in the zither, and I heard that Mr. Long Chen is very skilled in musical theory. I hope Mr. Long Chen can grace me with his wisdom. Suddenly, a red-robed maiden appeared on the stage, holding an ancient zither. She directly started to target Long Chen. Chapter 1196 Bragging to the point that even you don't believe it translator. Born to be not waiting for Long Chen to reply, the woman started playing her zither. The melodious zither music reverberated through the air, and the sound waves spread throughout the majority of Grand Xia City. Countless experts in the city gazed into the distance at the heavenly cloud platform. That zither music seemed to possess its own will that was giving them food for thought. Long Chen, you're actually skilled in music theory? How did she know that? Do you know her? Xia Yaoluo suspiciously looked at Long Chen. I also find it strange. Even I didn't know I was proficient in music theory, exclaimed Long Chen with shock. A chuckle escaped Xia Yaoluo's lips, and she lightly beat him. Warning, now's not the time to mess around. She'll definitely ask you for pointers once she is done. So prepare yourself. No need to worry. Could such a thing pose any difficulty to me? Long Chen? She's looking down on me far too much. Long Chen puffed out his chest. You have a way to deal with her. Asked Xia Yaoluo with surprise. A tactical escape. You busy yourself while I leave. Long Chen stood up to leave. But Xia Yaoluo pulled him back down. You're running from a battle. How can you act like this? How will you even raise your head in the future? Demanded Xia Yaoluo. Why would I raise my head? It's tiring. Long Chen shrugged. Think of some way to handle her. You're so smart. You can definitely deal with her. Right. Said Xia Yaoluo expectantly. That's not very likely. Of the seven apertures, I am only skilled in six. I have no assurance, said Long Chen gravely. Being skilled in six of them is already extremely amazing. Wait, are you saying, you're saying you don't even know one? Xia Yaoluo reacted after a moment. Exactly. When it came to music, Long Chen truly knew nothing. So fleeing was definitely the best choice. But you can't just escape, or it'll lose the face of our grand Xia. Right now, you're one of the grand Xia's generals. So you can't run. Xia Yaoluo kept a tight hold of Long Chen as if afraid he would slip away right this instant. Long Chen found it funny. This girl was too pure hearted. Sometimes, she couldn't even tell a joke and thought he really was running. Primal chaos split at the beginning. Yang formed the heavens. Yin formed the earth. Yin and Yang divided. Heaven and earth facing. Just at this moment, a sweet singing sound began to accompany the zither music. That woman was actually singing while playing. Her singing was very nice, and her song was a scripture containing the essence of the world. As her voice resounded in people's ears, they felt their mental realms rising. She was truly powerful. Once this song was over, everyone had to nod in praise. This song was truly amazing. If they could hear this song continuously, their mental realms would rapidly rise. Mr. Long Chen, please give me some pointers. The woman looked toward Long Chen. She stayed standing on the stage, refusing to get off. Long Chen frowned. Did she really have to act like this? He didn't recall any personal enmity between them. Why would she force him like this? Miss, you are forcing me. Long Chen bitterly smiled. I've long since heard that Mr. Long Chen's skill in the music Dao is extremely profound. I truly want to hear your appraisal. The woman looked at Long Chen sincerely. But while that sincerity might be able to trick others, it wasn't able to trick Long Chen. Xia Yanchong and the others were surprised to see this woman view Long Chen so highly. They hadn't expected Long Chen to have such a skill. Han Wenjin sneered. The higher he raised Long Chen, the better it would feel to knock him on the ground. Miss, 
Where did you hear that I'm skilled in musical theory? Long Chen smiled a smile that was not a smile at the woman. She looked at him. For some unknown reason, her heart pounded wildly when Long Chen was staring at her. She couldn't lie while looking at Long Chen. However, she did have gods. She smiled and bowed toward Long Chen, lowering her head to avoid his gaze. Mr. Long Chen, you don't need to be humble. Could it be that you refuse to give me any pointers? Since you want to force me like this despite the fact that we don't have any enmity, I won't stand on courtesy. Long Chen had never been afraid of bragging. Words began to flow from his mouth. All right, you're right. My humble self began studying literature at three and martial arts at four. At five I could recite poetry and songs. At six I could kill chickens and pigs. At seven I could slaughter dragons and tigers. At eight I saw through the mundane world of dust and began to study the various musical arts. When it comes to the music Dao, from the heights of the heavens to the depths of the earth, the zither, the gukan, the lute, the morning bells, the evening drum, there is none that I am not skilled in. Long Chen's bragging caused these people's ears to buzz and their eyes to see stars. Some of them even had their hair stand on end. At first, they were truly shocked by Long Chen. But then Long Chen's words came out like a torrent, and he bragged for a full two hours without repeating a single phrase. Now they all finally realized he was just bragging. But to be able to bring bragging to this level, it could also count as a divine ability. The most amazing thing was that Long Chen didn't even bat an eye. Eventually, even Long Chen ran out of bragging words and came to a stop. Everyone was silent, feeling dizzy from his bragging. As expected, Grandmaster Long Chen truly is amazing. I prostrate myself in admiration toward you. Grandmaster Long Chen, can you give me some pointers? The woman waited for Long Chen to finish bragging. The sneer on her face was unconcealable. She directly called him Grandmaster. The more Long Chen bragged, the more face he would lose in a bit. This was what she and Han Wenjin wanted to see. Xia Yaoluo was worried. She knew Long Chen knew nothing about musical theory. He had sealed his own path. Do you really want me to evaluate you? Long Chen smiled. Please, Grandmaster Long Chen. The woman bowed expectantly. All right, then I'll give you an evaluation. I will use two words to describe your music just now. Long Chen raised two fingers. Absolute trash. Everyone's expressions changed, especially that woman's. She turned ashen out of rage, and she glared at Long Chen. Ha ha ha. I've bitterly trained in the zither for 18 years. It's my first time hearing someone evaluate my music as absolute trash. Interesting. She sneered. Without a master to guide you, you'd still be trash after training 180 years. This has nothing to do with how long you train. A snail can train for 18,000 years and it still wouldn't be fast. The reason no one has evaluated your music as trash is because those people were just fawning over you. Or perhaps you don't let many people listen to your music. All it proves is your own lack of experience. As a master of music, you use the music Deo to peer into the heavenly Deos. The goal is to combine the body and the Deo. To have the heart reach a natural realm. To have no faults. To have no impurities. But what about you? We don't even know each other. But you followed someone else's orders and used your music Deo to target me. Ask yourself. Do you really feel no guilt? As a person, you're trash. So how could you possibly play a divine song? Do you think others are as brainless as you? Sneered Long Chen. The expressions of all the Grand Han's experts changed. This time, Long Chen's words were direct and clearly cursing them. You. The woman's expression also changed and she pointed at Long Chen. What you? Even you are in the habit of pointing at others when speaking? As expected, you're all from the same place. But in order to convince you, now that I'm done speaking about your personal character, I'll speak on your work. The zither song you played is called the Divine Sealing Soul Calming Song, while the song you sang was the Supreme Senses chapter of the Great Wasteland Western Scripture. It recorded the comprehension left behind by a supreme existence before they ascended. However, the scripture is damaged and too difficult to understand. Only a thousandth of the original remains, and both the beginning and ending have been lost, making it so no one has been able to comprehend it, let alone you with your foundation forging cultivation base. Even a life star expert is unable to comprehend the profundities within it. The reason you sang that song was purely to show off. Long Chen's words caused the people's hearts to shake. It seemed his previous evaluation hadn't been deliberately insulting. He had the facts to back it up. Amongst these people, only a few had heard of the Great Wasteland Western Scripture, let alone the Supreme Senses chapter within it. But looking at the zither playing girl shocked expression, they could tell his words were spot on. 
Xia Yao also jumped in shock. Long Chen had clearly said that he didn't know anything about music. But then how was he able to say so much? In truth, Long Chen really had no understanding of musical theory. But the song this woman had played was something he was very familiar with. That was because someone had once sent him a section of the Divine Sealing Soul Calming Song. That person was someone he had encountered by chance in the Eastern Wasteland, Ziyan. That song had been extremely beneficial to the Dragonblood Legion back then, which was why he remembered each beat within it. As for the Supreme Senses chapter of the Great Wasteland Western Scripture, that was something he had seen in the Zhuangshan Dao sect. It was not a cultivation technique, nor was it a secret art. Instead, it was an ancient text. Back then, he had been given the approval of the Zuan Master to go through the Hidden Scripture Pavilion's ancient texts. He had flipped through them all. It wasn't because Long Chen was so studious, but because he had been hoping to find records pertaining to the Nine Star Hegemon body art. Regretfully, he hadn't found anything, but due to his memory, he hadn't forgotten the texts he had read. It was precisely because he had read so many of those ancient texts that he had been able to swindle the Wine God Palace's disciples of their wine. Within the ancient texts had been many profound principles that were all difficult to understand. They sounded simple, yet each word had multiple meanings, and the principles contained within them were sources of great enlightenment. So Long Chen was familiar with the zither music and singing of this woman, which had given him his confidence. So despite knowing this had been a trap, he had still jumped into it to slap his opponent's face. I heard the divine sealing soul calming song years ago. The playing of that person was true divine ability. It was able to draw people into an artistic realm. She was thousands of times better than you. Then as for your singing, your sound day o cough. Ah, I mean your vocal range isn't wide enough. This kind of high difficulty scripture is out of your league. Your playing was average. Your singing was average. And you were unable to form any resonance between them. Nor were you able to bring people into that kind of artistic realm. Tell me, don't you think your performance was absolute trash? Demanded Long Chen. HMPH, don't try to act so above and aloof. Who doesn't know how to nitpick? If you have any ability, put on your own performance for us to see, raged the infuriated woman. Long Chen smiled slightly. He had known she would say such a thing. Fortunately, he had the photographic Jade Zi Yan had sent him. He was just about to show off a bit more and play it. Although it wouldn't be a personal performance, he had slapped his opponent's face enough already. Which esteemed guest is gracing my grand Zaya city with their presence? Just as Long Chen was about to take out the photographic jade, a majestic voice resounded throughout all of Grand Zaya City. What shocked Long Chen was that this voice belonged to the Grand Zaya's emperor. This is an expression that doesn't really translate. Basically, the expression is that he doesn't understand one aperture, which means he doesn't understand anything. Sound Dao sounds like vagina. Chapter 1197 Zi Yan reappears translator. Born to be Long Chen and the others were shocked. Just who had arrived that was able to disturb even the emperor and make him use such a respectful tone? The disciples of the elusive music Immortal Palace greet his majesty of the Grand Zaya. Suddenly, a voice like immortal music rang out. Just this voice was able to make others feel an artistic feeling. Each word contained an implicit charm of the cry of the heavenly deos. Hearing it made people feel at peace. So it's disciples from the Immortal Palace. No wonder. Please. Come into the palace hall and we can catch up. Xia Yuyang's voice rang out, causing all the people's expressions to change. Even the Grand Xia's emperor would take the initiative to receive mere disciples? What was going on? Han Wenjin and Xia Yunchong were no exceptions to being shocked. But after being shocked, they were delighted. The elusive music Immortal Palace was a power that had the inheritance of a true immortal. Each of their disciples was incredibly powerful. And most importantly, they all had an immortal charm around them. Even the movements of their hands could contain the flow of the heavenly deos. Most importantly, their music deo was similar to the wine god palace's wine deo. It was something cultivators longed for in their dreams. That was why hearing that they came from the elusive music immortal palace shocked and delighted all these people. Why would such people come to the Grand Zaya? I wouldn't dare. I only came because I heard the sound of music. If I've offended you, please forgive me, replied a woman's voice. For it to be a chance meeting is fate. It just so happens that the youth of my Grand Zaya and the Grand Han are having a cultural exchange right now. I would be delighted if Fairy could come up to the Heavenly Cloud platform and give them some pointers, said Zaya Yuyang. I wouldn't dare to say I could give pointers, but I do want to experience the skills of the youth of the Grand Zaya and Grand Han, 
said that woman. Please, go ahead. Suddenly, the heavenly cloud platform shook, and over ten beautiful figures appeared on it. These women all wore white dresses and were extremely beautiful. They were like people who had walked out of a painting. Their appearance caused the entire heavenly cloud platform to be filled with a sacred light. The ambience completely transformed. They're so beautiful. Zaya Yaluo looked at them enviously. These women possessed a special charm that made others feel like they couldn't touch them due to their own inferiority. The woman at the front was especially beautiful. A faint halo of light covered her body. She was like an immortal who had descended to the mortal world, making people have an urge to kneel before her. Long Chen, why did you put on a hat? Xia Yaoluo suddenly saw Long Chen had stealthily taken out a hat that blocked his face. SHH, I know that person. She likes me and has been pursuing me for a long time, but I'd rather die than accept. I even fled to the Grand Xia, but she followed me here. Come in front of me a bit so she doesn't recognize me, whispered Long Chen. He knew her. She was the one he had encountered in the Eastern Wasteland, the disciple of the elusive music Immortal Palace, Ziyan. She had been the one to send Long Chen the photographic jade, but he continued to have a strange feeling about her. Talking with her was difficult. It felt like he was an irredeemably wicked villain, while she was a pure-hearted, kind fairy who was constantly trying to enlighten him. Although the two of them could count as friends, Long Chen was afraid of having her continue trying to enlighten him. It was better to just quietly watch. Xia Yaoluo glared at Long Chen, not believing him. The elusive music Immortal Palace's disciples all cultivated the Dao, and they were not permitted to have a male and female relationship. How could she possibly be pursuing him to this point? That was clearly nonsense. Xia Yaoluo was just about to take Long Chen's hat off and tell him not to mess around when Zi Yan spoke. Bowing slightly toward them, she said, This junior is Zi Yan one of the elusive music Immortal Palace's disciples. The reason I came to the Grand Zaya today was originally to pay my respect to the Wine God Palace, but I was drawn over by the music here. So please forgive me for my sudden intrusion. You're too courteous. For you to flatter my Grand Zaya by coming here is a blessing for us. Please, sit. As the host, Zaya Yunfeng hastily arranged things for them. Everyone quickly opened up a space for them. Whether it was the experts from the Grand Han or the Grand Zaya, they all stared at Zi Yan and the others with reverence. They could sense the energy of the heavenly deos around them. It was like they had come from the heavens. Everyone's so polite. I came because I heard some music from here and after finishing some business. I wanted to see if there was perhaps fate between us. Can I know who was the one playing the zither back then? Asked Zi Yan. It was this junior. I've caused the elusive music immortal palaces fairies to laugh at my poor skills. The zither playing woman walked forward with an unnatural expression. Although she claimed to be proficient in the music Dao, she knew that she had no right to be compared with the elusive music Immortal Palace's disciples. Seeing Zi Yan and the others looking like goddesses from the heavens, she was both envious and worshipful. Her gaze was very complicated. Sister, you're too courteous. Amongst a hundred people there will be a hundred different kinds of music. The sound of the zither reflects the heart. And since each person's experiences and comprehension are different, the same song can be played with different flavors. Each art has its own possibilities, and each person's deo is different. There is no high or low, vulgar or refined. In the Eastern Wasteland, I once learned many things from a certain person. Since then, I've found great pleasure in all kinds of music deo. Each musician's style represents different lives, and they are all worth learning and experiencing. Zi Yan smiled at the woman. Her voice was like heavenly music, and it was both graceful and amicable. She seemed to be a mix of immortal and mortal, making people feel like they were dreaming. Long Chen stealthily peeked at Zi Yan from the crowd. He couldn't help being shocked. Zi Yan had actually reached an extremely terrifying realm. Although she hadn't released her aura, Long Chen sensed some kind of incredibly powerful energy from her. This energy was boundless. It was like Zi Yan was a terrifying controller of heaven and earth's fate. It gave Long Chen a feeling like he couldn't possibly defeaturing her. Although that energy within her was silent, making it so he couldn't estimate her power. Just by using the sharp senses of the nine-star hegemon body art, he felt that he was not her match. Your words honor me. They are truly food for thought, and millions of times better than the filthy speech that comes out of an unbearably coarse fellow. The woman bowed towards Yi Yan, but her eyes were looking at a certain figure in the crowd. She was intentionally trying to use Zi Yan's evaluation to counterattack Long Chen. The elusive music Immortal Palace's disciples stood at the pinnacle of the music Dao, 
Even such a figure hadn't called her music trash. So how could Long Chen be qualified to do so? Zi Yan was startled. She immediately followed that woman's gaze, and her beautiful eyes brightened. In a pleasantly surprised tone, she said, Long Chen, why are you here? For Zi Yan to call out Long Chen's name shocked everyone. They looked at Long Chen with disbelief. Xia Yao was especially shocked. Did this mean that Long Chen hadn't been talking nonsense just now? Damn it. She still recognized me. To be able to recognize me with just a glance. I suppose it simply means that I, Long Chen, am an exceptionally outstanding crane amongst a flock of chickens. Since he was exposed, Long Chen took off his hat and smiled towards Zi Yan. After parting in the eastern wasteland, Lady Zi Yan has become even more beautiful. Your beauty and cultivation base advance with each passing day. Long Chen looked at Zi Yan with a smile. It went without saying that Zi Yan was already a fairy like beauty, but now the immortal charm around her had grown even denser, making it very similar to Menki's air. But Menki's immortal charm was innate, while Zi Yan's immortal charm was through cultivation. Their airs were truly similar, but in Long Chen's eyes, when it came to beauty, Menki still beat her by a level. Perhaps that was because she was his future wife, and he felt his wife to be prettier. Zi Yan didn't express any surprise at Long Chen's amicable smile. Instead, she acted familiarly with him, saying, After parting in the eastern wasteland, Brother Long's grace is the same as ever. It truly makes a person sigh. But of course, the passing years are like a blade cutting at heavenly geniuses. Time can change my appearance, but it cannot change my heart. Or to put it in a simpler way, when it comes to my character, it's like a blind person trying to see. It's hopeless, said Long Chen helplessly. Seeing Long Chen and Zi Yan smiling and talking shocked everyone watching. Zi Yan was like an emissary from the heavens, making them all become reserved, afraid that they might offend her. But Long Chen was still acting the same. That sloppy appearance of his when combined with Zi Yan's immortal charm caused them to feel like a fairy had been forced to fall into the mundane world. Ah, sorry, I've been rude. I met Long Chen in the eastern wasteland by chance. The person I was talking about from before was him. Big sister. What you said before, there was someone who criticized your playing? You couldn't be talking about Long Chen, could you? I want to hear what kind of evaluation he had for you as well, said Zi Yan expectantly. Ah, the woman immediately became dumbfounded. From all appearances, it seemed Zi Yan deeply respected Long Chen, almost like they were companions. Hence, she had no idea how to reply. It was nothing. This sister's music was not bad and can even be praised as somewhat innovative. It was quite creative to combine the Great Wasteland Western Scripture's Supreme Senses chapter with the Divine Sealing Soul Calming Song, said Long Chen rather than mentioning the flaws he had mentioned before. After all, pointing at a woman while scolding her was beneath his dignity. The woman's resentment toward him faded a great deal upon hearing this. Long Chen was giving her face. Oh? The Great Wasteland Western Scripture's Supreme Senses chapter is exceptionally profound. Although only an incomplete remnant remains, it's still able to greatly benefit others. Each word of it is a cryptic gem. Combining it with the Divine Sealing Soul Calming Song would be extremely difficult. If the singer's vocal range was not great enough, it would make the word sluggish and unable to maintain a full richness. It might even harm the soul. For Big Sister to be able to combine them is truly an amazing thing. Praised Zi Yan. The woman had an urge to prostrate herself towards Zi Yan, even ignoring her great experience. Just this magnanimity was something she could only look up to. Thinking of how she had intentionally provoked Long Chen due to someone else's orders, she felt ashamed. Miss Zi Yan, since you've come, why don't you play a song as well? If you did, I would weep tears of joy, said Long Chen with a smile. Zi Yan smiled slightly. Since Brother Long has put it this way, I wouldn't dare to refuse. How about this? I will embarrass myself and play the song that Big Sister has just played. Everyone, please reflect over it carefully. Zi Yan flew onto the stage. With a wave of her hand, an ancient zither appeared before her. Chapter 1198 Once more going to the Wine God Palace translator. Born to be the zither was two and a half meters long, with the head of a dragon and body of a phoenix. It was unknown what wood it was made of, but the veined patterns on it almost looked like scales. A simple, ancient aura shot out of it. Everyone hastily sat down properly, eagerly awaiting Zi Yan's playing. Long Chen, do you really know this divine fairy? Is she really pursuing you? Xia Yaoluo looked at Long Chen with a look of disappointment. Foolish girl, are you still a child? You'll believe everything that anyone says? Yes, 
I know her, but she's from the elusive music Immortal Palace, and they're not allowed to have personal relationships. For you to believe such nonsense, are you a fool? Long Chen couldn't help being speechless upon seeing Xia Yaoluo's completely serious expression. This child's intelligence was gravely lacking. He, so that's what it was. Wait, you're the fool. Xia Yaoluo wrapped Long Chen with a giggle. Just at this moment, Zi Yan spread her hands, and her long fingers began to gently strum the zither strings. Deep sounds reverberated throughout the air. The song she was playing was the same, but while the woman's playing had been diffused and light, this sound was heavy, directly entering the depths of people's hearts, and even their souls. Long Chen smiled faintly. This was the true peak of the music Dao, to use one's heart to connect to the heavenly Daos, to have one's music reflect one's thoughts and feelings. It was like falling into a deep pool with incredibly clear water, without the slightest of impurities. As the zither music played, they were all drawn into another world. They felt like they were sitting in space. Stars flowed around them as they quietly watched the workings of the cosmos. Primal chaos split at the beginning. Yang formed the heavens. Yin formed the earth. Yin and Yang divided. Heaven and earth facing. A beautiful voice suddenly appeared within that space, penetrating deep into their souls. It was like heaven and earth were chanting, as if gods were murmuring. In that instant, Long Chen saw the beginning of the world. First, there was nothing but primal chaos. Then Yun and Yang divided. Heaven and earth were born. The world began to revolve, and the stars began to shine through the sky. What a deep artistic realm. She's actually able to use the music Dao to manifest the scripture. This manifestation is the closest to the original creator's artistic realm. Regretfully. The Supreme Senses chapter is far too damaged, or she really might have been able to use the music Dao to restore it to its original state. Xia Yuyang was sitting in a grand palace with the white-haired elder. The white-haired elder's turbid eyes were looking outside the palace. This girl is probably the future successor of the elusive music Immortal Palace. She has already reached the realm of being one with the Dao. That is the appearance of an Empyrean. Xia Yuyang nodded. He sighed. Empyreans are the true favorites of heaven and earth the future masters of the world. Regretfully, my grand Zaya's karmic luck isn't enough to give birth to an Empyrean. Just as the two of them were sighing emotionally in the palace, on top of the heavenly cloud platform, Zi Yan pressed her hands against the zither and her singing came to a stop. Everyone was still caught up in a kind of heavenly Dao realm. Long Chen was the first to start clapping. Zi Yan's zither arts had already reached a divine realm of perfection. Long Chen truly prostrated himself toward her in admiration. This zither music on the heavenly cloud platform can only exist above the heavens, here in the clouds and wind. The human world can only occasionally hear such a thing, praised Long Chen. Only then did everyone recover. Xia Yaoluo felt even more admiration for Long Chen due to his ability to flatter someone so eloquently. I don't dare accept such words. Brother Long, for you to praise me like this, can you please give me some pointers? Said Zi Yan. I can't, because there's no point, as there are no faults. And since we're so familiar with each other, I'm afraid that if I continuously praise you, you'll get embarrassed, said Long Chen. This singing and zither playing was truly flawless, let alone an amateur like Long Chen. Even another expert in the music Dao wouldn't be able to pick out a flaw. Han Wenjin also went up to say a few courteous words. He wanted to say something that would display his own cultured and artistic skills. But when he opened his mouth, he had no idea what to say. Because Long Chen had taken the lead, it made all the other words of praise sound tasteless. On the other hand, Xia Yaoluo, who was innately pure-hearted and also worshipped Zi Yan, held her hand and began to incessantly chatter. There were several times when Xia Yunfen gave her a look for her to take note of etiquette, but she didn't even look at him. Big sister, how about you come and stay at my home tonight? Let me tell you, Long Chen has many fine wines, all of which he swindled from the wine god palace. I'll treat you to some. Xia Yaoluo was full of worship for the practically divine Zi Yan, and her mouth also became unguarded, causing her to say anything and everything. Long Chen raged. You foolish girl. What are you saying? How can you say it was swindling? Furthermore, don't you have some as well? If you're going to treat someone, why force others to be the generous ones? HMPH. Just look at how stingy you are. Big sister Zi Yan. Come stay here. I'll give you my own wine to drink. Xia Yaoluo had yet to let go of Zi Yan's hand. Thank you, little sister. It just so happens that it's getting late, and for you to take me in naturally makes me endlessly grateful. How could I refuse? Zi Yan smiled. 
Xia Yaoluo was delighted to see Zi Yan really agree. Xia Yanchang immediately had someone go prepare rooms for the elusive music Immortal Palace's disciples to live in the Grand Xia's Imperial Palace was an immense honor to the Grand Xia. That was because the elusive music Immortal Palace's position in the cultivation world was just that high. Long Chen, I'm going to the Wine God Palace tomorrow to pay my respects to the High Priest. Do you want to come as well? Asked Zi Yan suddenly. Definitely. I've always wanted to pay my respects to the High Priest. But I heard he doesn't like being disturbed by others. So I never had a chance. Long Chen was delighted. The High Priest was the master of the Wine God Palace. He was claimed to be an apostle of the Wine God sent to spread his glory. He was an extremely mysterious existence. There was another banquet when the sky darkened. But Zi Yan refused Xia Yanchang's invitation and did not attend. Instead, it was Xia Yaoluo who had pulled her away. Most likely, she had gone to show off her battle spoils from the Wine God Palace. The night banquet ended with an extremely calm atmosphere. The next morning, Long Chen received Zi Yan's invitation to go to the Wine God Palace. Not only were Long Chen and Zi Yan going, but Xia Yaoluo, Xia Yanchang, Han Wenjin, and Li Wangji were also coming with them. When the six of them burned incense in front of the Wine God's image, nothing happened with the others. But the incense sticks that Long Chen lit once more turned to ash instantly, shocking the others. Everyone, please come in. The high priest is already waiting for you in the divine hall. The disciple in charge of greeting guests led the way. Everyone followed him into the wine god palace. Zi Yan was the lead this time. The others were only accompanying her. It had to be known that the high priest was not someone that just anyone could see. Even the emperor himself couldn't see him whenever he wished. The Grand Xia's emperor had held power for many years, but he had only seen the high priest once. Others didn't even have the qualification. Because Zi Yan was a disciple of the elusive music Immortal Palace, she had already sent a greeting many days ago and gained permission to see the high priest. Long Chen and the others were just profiting off her. Originally, Xia Yunfeng and the other princes had also wanted to come, but they hadn't succeeded. If too many people went, it would be too impolite. So there were two from the Grand Xia, two from the Grand Han, adding on Long Chen as well as the host, Zi Yan. There were already quite a few people. If any more came, it would appear that they were lacking respect for the high priest. The path they were taking was the same small path that Long Chen and Xia Yaoluo had taken before. It stripped them of their cultivation base. They slowly followed it through a winding forest. The Wine God Palace truly is a wonderland within the human world. The secluded and winding path. The small pavilions hidden in the mountains. It's almost similar to my Grand Han's hidden immortal island. Praised Han Wenjin as he looked at the surrounding scenery. Long Chen sneered inside. This was truly shameless. Long Chen looked at Han Wenjin acting like a refined scholar without saying anything. But Xia Yanchang couldn't help but open his mouth. Prince Wenjin's comparison is a bit off. The Wine God Palace has a true god's inheritance. While your hidden immortal island only has a few myths circulating around it. It seems the difference between them is too great to compare. The Grand Han's hidden immortal island was nothing more than an island with beautiful scenery. In order to make the island more famous. They had fabricated a mass of contrived divine stories involving it. Then they had made a few ancient relics on the island. Then looking over the entire martial heaven continent, they had picked out famous figures and tossed a few traces of those figures on the island. They would cry, look, that grand figure actually came from my grand Han. They had no foundation, so they randomly made up whatever they wanted. That greatly dissatisfied the grand Xia, which was why Xia Yanchang couldn't help but retort. All those myths happened too long ago, and there's no way to confirm them. We can't say with absolute certainty that there was no true immortal on Hidden Immortal Island, so it's too early for you to say that. Furthermore, I only said that the scenery was similar. Brother Yanchang misconstrued my words. Although he couldn't match Long Chen, that didn't represent that Han Wenjin didn't know how to quibble. When comparing eloquence, Long Chen could make Han Wenjin choke with a single sentence. And Han Wenjin had the same ability when it came to Xia Yanchang. Xia Yanchang had no way to retort. Esteemed guest has returned. Please accept this bow from this disciple. When they reached the first pavilion, the man from back then was standing in front of it and bowed toward Long Chen. That made everyone jump. What was going on? Since when did the Wine God Palace's disciples bow to others? Long Chen hastily raised him and bitterly smiled. They were all grand figures with the ability to shake heaven and earth. While he was just a swindler, last time, he hadn't known about the origins of the Wine God Palace's disciples. 
When he had learned about it, he had begun to coldly sweat. I really don't dare to accept such a thing, said Long Chen humbly. Disciple came to a sudden comprehension due to your pointers. The shackles on my heart were broken, and the clouds and dust were swept away. I've been waiting every day for you to return so that Disciple can thank you. Within the next few days, Disciple will be going on a journey of enlightenment. So esteemed guest's arrival has fulfilled Disciple's desire, said the Wine God Palace's Disciple. He once more bowed respectfully toward Long Chen and vanished from their sight. Other than Xia Yaoluo, the others had no idea what was going on. What kind of joke was this? The Wine God Palace's Disciples were all incomparably prideful people. For them to bow toward a youth, and even call themselves disciple, had this world gone insane? Even Zi Yan was no exception. A bright light shone in her eyes when she looked at Long Chen, making him feel embarrassed. He said, in truth, it was just a coincidence. I don't know what random thing I spouted, but the senior managed to enlighten himself through it. It was just his fortune and had nothing to do with me. They continued onward. As a result, people continued to come out of the pavilions they passed to say their regards to Long Chen, making them speechless. Was Long Chen's relationship with other people really so good? Damn brat. You finally returned. Get over here. Let's fight another 300 bouts. Suddenly, a huge figure appeared in front of them, causing them to jump in shock. Chapter 1199 Personally Written Translator Born to be this person was over 2 meters tall. His hair fell to his shoulders, and his fierce-looking face looked like it was made of copper or bronze. An ominous glint was present within his eyes, making him seem like a demon blocking their path. None of his aura was leaking out but his eyes were as sharp as blades. Their scalps turned numb just from being stared at by him. Han Wenjin, Li Wangji, and Xia Yanchang were all appalled. They recognized this person to be a legendary figure who had once shaken the majority of the continent. The fierce Yang Butcher Tu Kai and Shang. Damn fatty. Do you have to frighten people like this? Today, I'm accompanying my friend to see the high priest. So wash your neck and wait for me. I'll crush you till you don't have any fingers left. Long Chen extended a fist confidently. Xia Yanchang's soul almost fled in terror, and his face turned green. Did Long Chen not want his life any longer? As expected, Tu Kai and Chang furiously frowned, and he also extended a fist at Long Chen, saying, Fine, I'll wait for you to return. I don't believe I can't beat you, Uncle Fatty. Last time you lost so miserably. Are you going to get revenge this time? In front of this terrifying, demon like Tu Kai and Chang. Xia Yaoluo wasn't the slightest bit afraid, and she even giggled. This Tu Kai and Chang wasn't scary. The true terror had come when Long Chen and Tu Kai and Chang had started drinking. At that time, they had begun furiously cursing each other. His current appearance was actually his friendly one. Tu Kai and Chang raged. Damn girl. Do you know how to speak? What are you talking about? What miserable losses? He, he's a guest, and a child. So I naturally had to let him win a few. Hurry up and go so you can come back. This time, I'm going to wipe out all my losses. Tu Kai and Chang's final words ended up confirming Xia Yaoluo's words. Tu Kai and Chang had been defeated last time, and he refused to accept that. Walking past Tu Kai and Chang's area, they followed the Wine God Palace's welcoming disciple forward noveloon.com Long Chen. You beat that terrifying fellow? How did you do it? Xia Yanchang couldn't help but ask. It's not like what you're thinking. We were playing a finger-guessing drinking game. He couldn't beat me, and as soon as he lost, he began to curse me. When I get cursed, I cursed back, and he couldn't beat me in cursing either. Now he's looking to be beaten again. Long Chen shook his head. Are you not afraid of him? Xia Yanchang was shocked. Afraid of what? He's now a disciple of the Wine God Palace, and he's long since exchanged his butcher's blade for a wine barrel. He doesn't dare hit me. So, he couldn't beat me in the finger-guessing game. He couldn't beat me in cursing, and he doesn't dare hit me. Didn't you see his furious expression just now? It's because he has no way to beat me. In truth, he should be thanking me. Rather than spending all day making wine, I can accompany him with some games, some drinking, and some cursing. Think about how great such a life is. He should be very grateful to me, said Long Chen with a laugh. Xia Yaoluo giggled. Big brother Long Chen is very evil. That Uncle Fatty lost to him so badly that I couldn't even keep watching. In the end, Big Brother Long Chen was so shameless as to even demand wine from him, and he cursed him when he didn't give it to him. The two of them both cursed each other fiercely, but in the end, Uncle Fatty still gave the wine to Big Brother Long Chen. 
That's why I feel that big brother Long Chen is eviler and fiercer than Uncle Fatty, ungrateful person who forgets kindness. Spit out all my wine, demanded Long Chen frostily. TCH, put out your hand and I'll spit it out. Xia Yaoluo stuck out her tongue at him and made a vomiting motion. Yaoluo, pay attention to your manners. You are a princess. Xia Yanchang pulled on Xia Yaoluo. How had this child turned so foolish as to make such an improper action? Zi Yan smiled slightly. Long Chen is someone who likes to act naturally without caring about trifles. And Sister Yao Luo is also very good. You're kind and pure. So being casual is fine. Oh, big sister Zi Yan overpraises me. Xia Yao Luo was incredibly excited to receive Zi Yan's praise. Han Wenjin and Li Wangji exchanged a glance, both seeing the anger in the other's eyes. The two of them were like shadows, completely ignored. However, their main goal in coming to the Grand Xia this time was to curry favor with the Wine God Palace. They had no choice but to follow them. As the welcoming disciple led the way, they crossed a large mountain, arriving in a flat land with a palace built on top of it. Please go inside. The welcoming disciple only led them to the gate before stopping and expressing that they could enter. Entering, the first thing they saw was a folding screen. There was a poem written on top of it. Wine contains the great universe. The pot contains the passing of time. All things are in motion, freely changing. Clear wine is tasteless like water. Turbid wine is dense like soup. Primal chaos devolves into clearness and turbidness. A hundred flavors brew within the sky. Wine allows one to escape the pathless chase of fame and fortune. To become intoxicated is to dream of 10,000 deos. To wake is to see the world. This poem was written using immortal characters. The strokes of the characters never paused making the poem look like it had been written in one go. It looked a bit messy and also carefree. It was like it had been written to vent emotions. It was as if a master calligrapher had gotten drunk and written it without any care for tidiness. It was confident and easy, and contained its own Deo charm. Zi Yan and the others stood in front of the screen and were lost in thought as they looked over the words. Whether it was the actual words or the calligraphy, they all contained boundless Deo charm. If they could comprehend the profundities within it, it would benefit them for a lifetime. This is a kind of peak realm and also an artistic realm. A flash of emotion and insight from the writer made them use this rapid and carefree method to express their comprehension. This kind of wisdom, this magical power, praised Han Wenjin as he examined the writing. It was unknown whether he was doing it intentionally, but his huge mass of praise made Long Chen's hair stand on end. Did he really have no shame? Even if he had to give praise. He should base it on the facts. The way Han Wenjin put it, it seemed like these words could bring the dead back to life. You flatter me, as expected of the Grand Han's prince. This imaginative power and brilliance with words are admirable. I wonder if the other friends can appraise this old man's scribble. An ancient voice rang out from within the palace. Everyone was shocked. For this person to be speaking from within the palace, it had to be the high priest. It was unexpected that this poem had been personally written by the high priest. Senior's calligraphy is carefree and uninhibited. The bold strokes are like coiling dragons expressing their own transcendent wills, said Li Wangji. Following Han Wenjin, Li Wangji also began to overflow with praise, making Long Chen speechless. The high priest's voice rang out, This old man's calligraphy is very unskilled. For young friend to praise me like this makes me blush with shame. Do the other friends have anything to say? Please, don't be constrained. The high priest's voice was extremely kind and peaceful. He didn't have any of the domineering air of a peerless expert. He seemed more like a kind elder. This little one doesn't understand calligraphy, but within the words, I can sense a boundless and majestic artistic realm. It's very beneficial to my cultivation. So Senior's divine masterpiece has already greatly benefited me, said Xia Yanchong respectfully. Young friend cultivates the undefeatable Dao, which requires paying particular attention to the heart. To keep a heart worry free is very difficult said the high priest. Long Chen. I. Xia Yaoluo was a bit nervous. It's fine. Worst case. Just say a bunch of nonsense. The high priest is a very nice person. He won't kill you. Long Chen smiled at the pale Xia Yaoluo. Now even Zi Yan was speechless. Long Chen really did dare to say anything. Did he not know how to judge the situation first? Haha. <laughs> Young friend. Don't be nervous. You can say whatever you want. Laughed the high priest. Then I'll tell you the truth. I didn't feel anything. I don't even recognize most of these characters, said Xia Yaoluo embarrassedly. Ha ha ha. Good. It's rare to have someone be so frank. If you know, then you know. If you don't know, 
Then you don't know, considering the vastness of the world, who could possibly know everything, laughed the high priest, sounding surprisingly happy. Many thanks, Grandpa High Priest, said Zaya Yaluo happily, being so intimate as to even change the way she called the high priest, from senior to grandpa. But Zaya Yaluo did look cute, especially when she wasn't being obstinate. She looked like a pure child who naturally had no schemes. The elusive music Immortal Palace's distinguished disciple. Do you have any comments on my scribbling? The high priest's tone was clearly different when it came towards Yi Yan. It actually had the feeling of him speaking to someone of the same generation, using the wine deo to approach the heavenly deos, attempting to break through. Zi Yan softly opened her mouth and only said a few words. Truly worthy of being a genius of the elusive music immortal palace, you even managed to see through my realm. The high priest seemed to greatly appreciate Zi Yan's comment. Young friend Long Chen, last time you came, I was in seclusion so we had no opportunity to meet. It was truly regretful but I heard that you managed to plunder everything from my wine god palace's disciples. This ability fills me with admiration. Now the high priest's voice contained a joking tone. Long Chen immediately felt like his face was burning. It was as though he had tricked a child of their lollipop, and now their family head had come to ask what had happened. He awkwardly said, Cough. In truth, it was just a social exchange. Yes, a social exchange. Long Chen wouldn't admit to something like swindling people even if he was beaten to death. That was his strongest point. Haha, <laughs> it was just a joke. I wonder if young friend can give me some comments about my scribblings, said the high priest. Long Chen thought about it for a moment and said, other than wine, there is nothing else. When Zi Yan heard this, she became lost in thought. When she looked at those words once more, a flash of insight appeared in her eyes, and her lips curled up into a beautiful smile. Other than wine. There is nothing else. Haha, <laughs> other than wine, there is nothing else. The high priest laughed delightedly. The screen slowly moved away, revealing a brick path. The bricks were so old that they were gray and covered in fine cracks. Behind the screen was a statue. It was around the same size as a real person. It depicted a man holding a wine pot in one hand and a wine cup in another, drinking without restraint. A tranquil and peaceful light shone in his eyes, along with divine light. Once they approached the statue, Zi Yan, Xia Yanchang, Han Wenjin, and the others all involuntarily knelt on the ground, dumbfounding Long Chen. Chapter 1200 The High Priest Translator, Born to be Damnit. Why do we have to kneel? I'm not used to that. Looking at everyone else kowtowing to the statue devoutly, Long Chen couldn't help being stupefied. He was too conspicuous now as the only one standing. He knew this was the wine god statue, a symbol of the wine god's inheritance as well as representing the wine god's deo. Kneeling toward it was to display their respect to the god. This wasn't a form of surrender, but simply etiquette. However, for a long time now, Long Chen hadn't been able to force himself to kneel. But with everyone else kneeling, standing would make Long Chen appear rude. Long Chen repeatedly told himself that this was just a kind of etiquette, no different than a bow. He had only just managed to bend his knees when the high priest's voice suddenly rang out. Everyone, come in. The wine has already been prepared, so I'd like to invite you to try it. Thank you high priest. You're really handsome, graceful, and smart. Don't worry, I definitely won't swindle you of your wine. Long Chen was delighted to be able to dispense with the kneeling etiquette. Everyone only got up now, but seeing Long Chen, their expressions became odd. The reason why they had knelt was because they had had no choice but to do so. They hadn't been able to stop themselves. It had come from a reverence in their souls toward a god and only by kneeling could they calm themselves. Long Chen, how brazen. Even the wine god isn't worthy of you kneeling. Han Wenjin directly insulted Long Chen upon seeing that he refused to kneel to the wine god statue. He hoped to get the high priest to expel him. Does it have anything to do with you? Long Chen rolled his eyes at Han Wenjin. He was truly a petty little person. What kind of crappy prince was he? Noveloon.com Zi Yan looked at Long Chen in shock. She wasn't jealous. She simply wanted to know how Long Chen could ignore a god's divine might. Was he really so arrogant that he could even ignore a god? They quickly advanced forward after hearing the high priest's summoning. They had only just left the statue when... Crack. The statue suddenly became covered in fine cracks. The cracks were very tiny, and the sound was also very light. With their cultivation bases stripped, they ended up not sensing it. In truth, the instant Long Chen had started to bend his knees... The statue had quivered ever so slightly, and it was also in that instant that the high priest summoned them in. 
Once they were inside the main hall of the palace, they saw a kind-looking old man with long white hair sitting and smiling toward them. Disciple greets the high priest. They all hastily bowed. This high priest was the one with the highest authority in the wine god palace. They all felt respect for him. There's no need to be so courteous. Please, sit. The high priest pointed toward the mats in front of him. From left to right, Zi Yan, Long Chen, Xia Yaoluo, Xia Yanchang, Han Wenjin, and Li Wangji sat down on the mats, looking at the high priest before them. The high priest looked like a very ordinary elder. No one could sense any cultivation base from him. He wore simple hemp robes and had a cane by his side. It looked to be made out of ordinary wood and was not a martial weapon. Sitting in front of the high priest made them all feel exceptionally peaceful. They could be natural and familiar with him without constraining themselves. It's been a long time since I've spoken with guests. Today, I was lucky enough to speak so much with youngsters. It feels like I've even grown younger. The high priest smiled. Grandpa high priest, you're not old at all. The frank and outspoken Zaya Yaluo directly comforted him. If you turn grandpa to big brother, he really won't seem old at all. Long Chen smiled slightly, but his expression quickly stiffened. He didn't know why, but the words he had only been thinking inside had popped right out of his mouth. He looked in shock at the high priest. Just what kind of ability was this? Long Chen, don't be rude. Zi Yan glanced at Long Chen. He was going too far to even dare to joke at the expense of the high priest. The others were too stunned to even react to that. Ha ha ha, the high priest laughed. It's fine. Youngsters should act like youngsters. Otherwise, by the time you reach my age, you'll regret being too cautious in your youth. Long Chen was embarrassed, as well as apprehensive. The high priest was probably even more terrifying than he had imagined. He wasn't even able to be duplicitous in front of him. Disciple Zi Yan pays her respects to the high priest. I beg the high priest for his guidance, said Zi Yan respectfully. This old man has nothing to teach you. The only thing I can do is give you a few jugs of old wine. The high priest shook his head. A jug suddenly appeared in his hand, and he poured a bowl of wine in front of each of them, gesturing for them to drink. Long Chen raised his bowl. He found that the wine seemed to be extremely turbid, but a careful examination shockingly revealed that the turbid entities were actually runes. The wine actually had runes within it. All its energy had been locked into the runes, and when the wine was swallowed, the runes instantly dissolved, their energy crashing throughout the drinker's entire body. Buzz. Everyone's bodies began to glow. Heaven and Earth's energy surged rapidly toward them, whirling around. But there was one exception. That was Long Chen. Long Chen felt the runes dashing throughout his body, constantly nourishing it. All his pores were opened as if to drink in heaven and earth's energy, but that energy ignored him. It entered his body and then exited it, flying toward the other five. It was like there were six hungry hatlings begging for food. The others were all fed but not Long Chen. This is a wine I made in the prime of my life. It is able to connect to heaven and earth's energy to temper the body. Here, try the second wine. The high priest poured another bowl of wine for them but this wine was completely clear. It would be assumed to be water if it weren't for the fragrance coming from it. Entering their stomachs, the wine energy slowly spread throughout their bodies. Compared to the previously fierce torrent of energy, this second wine was more gentle and mellow, leaving behind a rich aftertaste. Long Chen wasn't able to sense the heavenly Dao energy, but he saw Zi Yan and the others had content and relaxed expressions. They were clearly in a special state. Long Chen couldn't help but bitterly smile inside. It seemed he had come for nothing this time. These final wines seemed to have no affinity with him. This is the third wine. It is something new I've been developing over the past few years. Please, have a taste. Long Chen raised the third bowl. When he drank it, he couldn't help being dumbfounded. How was this wine? It was clearly water. Not only was Long Chen dumbfounded, Zi Yan and the others also did not comprehend. They clearly also felt like they had just drunk water. But comprehension suddenly flashed within Zi Yan's eyes. Many thanks for High Priest's pointers. The starting point is also the end point. Rebirth. Breaking out of the cocoon. Leaping onto a new track in pursuit of higher points. Zi Yan respectfully bowed toward the High Priest. The true Dao is the peak of simplicity. It can be found in the curving of a square into a circle. In a surface broken by a dot. In a body covered by a surface. Even if it's the inheritance of a god. The Dao can still progress said the high priest. Zi Yan once more bowed to the high priest delightedly, filled with gratitude. Disciple was lost and unable to break through the next barrier. Your pointers have allowed me to comprehend how to break through. 
Haha, I don't have the qualifications to give you pointers. I just offered you a few bowls of poor wine. The high priest smiled. The rest of you can wander around the other places of the wine god palace. Perhaps you will be able to make a few gains. I have a few things I wish to say to young friend Long Chen. So please stay behind for a moment. Everyone was startled, looking at Long Chen with disbelief. The high priest wished to speak to Long Chen alone? There was no way for them to refuse. Han Wenjin and Li Wangji were both jealous. Han Wenjin had come this time just to see the high priest. For this, he had spent three years studying wine, completely mastering wine tasting, winemaking, and all kinds of etiquette and knowledge. Just by smelling it once, he could tell a wine's craftsmanship, maturity, and composition. That was all so he would be able to appraise wine better and win the favor of the wine god palace's disciples. But now, although he had managed to see the high priest, he had only drunk three bowls of wine, without even gaining the qualifications to speak to him before being shooed off. He panicked. High priest, my grand Han wishes to invite the wine god palace to establish a branch in my grand Han, allowing the wine god's glory to shine in even more places, said Han Wenjin hurriedly. That's a good thing. I will consider it, said the high priest. Han Wenjin was delighted to hear that. Only then did he leave with the others. Once they were gone, Long Chen said, High priest, you absolutely cannot establish a branch in the Grand Han. Oh, why is that? Asked the high priest. Because if you go the Grand Han, the wine god palace will very likely become the Grand Hans, said Long Chen gravely. Haha, <laughs> where the wine god goes is not important. As long as it's possible to properly lead the path of the wine dao, it's enough. The only danger is certain people harboring improper intentions and misrepresenting the wine god's will. Now that we're alone, if young friend has any questions, you can go ahead and ask them. If I can answer them, I definitely will. Even Long Chen didn't know why the high priest would treat him so specially. He couldn't help but feel overwhelmed by favor. Disciple truly has something he would like the high priest's help with. Long Chen hesitated and told the high priest about the medicinal wines he had made. He also brought them out for the high priest to appraise. Just through a final combination, you were able to create such an effect. It's practically a divine ability. Even with the high priest's calm nature, he was shocked. This little one has some understanding of the pill deo. I hope to be able to undergo a mutually beneficial exchange with the wine god palace's wine deo. Right now, these medicinal wines are just the result of compounding the wine's effect with medicinal pills, making their effect limited. For the pill deo to merge with the wine deo requires them be combined in the brewing process. During this process, the pill deo and wine deo will corroborate each other and I trust that it will be greatly beneficial to the wine god palace's disciples' cultivation. Otherwise, the wine god palace would not have agreed to cooperate with Pill Valley back then. Furthermore, I swear on my very life that I definitely won't betray your trust like Pill Valley. All the medicinal wine will only benefit the people by my side, and I definitely won't do anything to blaspheme the wine god, said Long Chen solemnly.